the tradition of Oklahoma football. It began with Bud Wilkinson and continued with Barry Switzer, producing six national championships. A tradition of great running backs, Steve Owens, Joe Washington, and Billy Sims. A tradition of dominating defenders like Leroy Selman and Brian Bosworth. A tradition of success that's been entrusted to second-year coach Gary Gibbs as Oklahoma football enters the new decade. One hundred years of pit football, nine national titles, and a host of legendary figures. Pop Warner, Iron Mike Ditka, Heisman winner Tony Dorsett, and quarterback Dan Marino. As pit football begins its second century, new coach Paul Hackett leads the Panthers as they try to recapture the glory of yesteryear. It's Pittsburgh and Oklahoma, college football on CBS Sports. The University of Oklahoma in its centennial year, and that means a hundred Saturdays of Sooner football. A football tradition here in the Panhandle State, and as it's been for so long through those six national championships, 75,000 plus on hand here at Memorial Stadium. They'll cram in to watch the battle here at Owen Field between the 14th ranked Oklahoma Sooners and the 13th ranked Panthers of Pittsburgh. Hi, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. Welcome to Norman, and welcome to CBS coverage of the 1990 college football season. We've got a beauty for you here in Norman, Oklahoma, and Pittsburgh. Our doubleheader game tonight, could it be better? Number one, Notre Dame, and fourth-ranked Michigan. We hope you're with us all day long. And with me, my sidekick, Dan Jiggetts. And, Dan, you look at Oklahoma. They got off to a good start last week with a win over UCLA. They're trying to put the pieces back together from a very un-Oklahoma-like seven and four-year last season. Well, they're trying to return from the football abyss. You know, they've been on probation, and they still are. They were off. TV, but some things have really changed here at, at Oklahoma. Gary Gibbs now has installed the option eye offense, and folks, get ready for this. Oklahoma is throwing the football. Last week, they threw 18 times against UCLA. Now, granted, the numbers weren't real great. They only completed four passes, but that's really a big change here at Oklahoma out of that wishbone, and now the option eye. And you talk about throwing the football, and you look at Paul Hackett and the Pittsburgh Panthers, and maybe nobody in college football is doing it as well as they are right now. Very versatile offensive team. Well, Gary Gibbs told us that no one in college football right now is throwing the football like Paul Hackett. Nobody has that kind of an offense. But keep this in mind now. He has been running the football 65% of the time so far this season, so there's a big difference in what you could normally expect out of Pittsburgh. And there's a big difference in the styles of these teams. They may not play another team like the other all season long, so what do we expect today? Well, I think it's going to come down to a time of possession. Now, if Oklahoma runs the football and they're allowed to run out of that option eye and control the clock, then Pittsburgh is in a lot of trouble. They've got to control the perimeter on the, on the uh, offense. Now, defensively for Pitt, uh, I think that one thing that they have also have to do is look at the passing game now of Oklahoma as something different. And uh, Pittsburgh offensively has to control the clock with the uh, dump-off passes, and Kervin Rich is running the football. Kervin Rich is one of the best in college football. Five of his last six games have been 100 yards plus. But you go back a long time before you can find a Pittsburgh team that has beaten Oklahoma. In fact, the season series, 8-1-1. One, and one. Oklahoma has owned this series. Pittsburgh is hoping to turn it around, and here come the Panthers. Pittsburgh off to a 2-0 start, ranked 13th in the country. Coming off a win last week over Boston College. They beat Ohio University in their first game. Paul Hackett's unbeaten as Pittsburgh's head coach. There's the national ranking for the Pitt Panthers, and they hope that this could catapult them into the top 10 if they can win this big road game today. And they really feel good about this. They should. They've got a, a nice controlled passing game that really should help them against this Oklahoma defense, a defense that the people here in Oklahoma are saying is as good as the ones they had from 84 to 87. Second-year coach, Gary Gibbs. And as Pittsburgh takes the field, the Oklahoma Sooners set to do likewise. To go back to 1965 to find a pit team that could beat Oklahoma. And here come the Sooners. <laughs> Gary 
Terry Gibbs in his second year, and his crimson and cream clad suitors take the field. Sooner fans are ready. 75,000 plus packed in here to Memorial Stadium. 14th rank, Oklahoma. 13th rank, Pittsburgh. We've got it coming up on CBS in a moment. CBS Sports presents college football. Live from Owen Field in Norman, Oklahoma, it's the Pittsburgh Panthers versus the Oklahoma Sooners. Today's CFA game is sponsored by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. United Airlines, serving over 200 cities in the U.S. and around the world, come fly the friendly skies. And by new Keystone and Keystone Light, bottle beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? If you look down on Owen Field, and that is going to be a hot Owen Field today, you can bet. You see the temperature already here at kickoff at 90 degrees, and we've got a lot of sun, and we've got Mike Joy, the third man on our broadcast team on the sideline. I think he's probably a little warm already. Let's go down to Mike. Thank you, Brad. 94 degrees down here. The good news is it's 17 degrees cooler than Oklahoma's game last week, but it's very humid. This artificial service has been in place since 1981. It's very hard, and it's very fast. Right now, it's very damp. They watered it down at 10 a.m. this morning to try to take some of the traction out of the surface, make it easier on the players as they cut across it. But it's very humid down here. They expect this will all burn off and dry by halftime. All right, Mike, thank you. We are ready to go. Gary Gibbs off to a 1 0 start this season. Brad Riddell will tee it up and kick it away as Oklahoma won the toss, deferred to the second half, so Pittsburgh will receive. Glenn DeVoe and Ricky Turner, the deep duo for the Panthers. got to the 24-yard line. Drew Chrisman made the stop. Pittsburgh offensively, Alex Van Pelt, the redshirt sophomore quarterback, and a good one. Backed by Kervin Richards and Derek Lewis in the backfield. His receiving core, Orlando Truitt, who had the fabulous game in the John Hancock Bowl at the end of last season, and he's picked up right where he left off, along with Hosea Hurd. Alex Van Pelt, what a story he is, and what a year he had a season ago as he broke Dan Marino's single-season passing mark, and he brings his troops up. Pittsburgh, first down of their own 24-yard line. And play action immediately as Van Pelt wants to put it up. Almost had it picked off on the first play of the game. Let's take a look at the Pittsburgh offensive line. Chris Sestilli at the center spot. The guards... Gary Gorievsky and Jeff Christie. And the tackles, Mike Lavorio and Scott Miller. Miller, the leader of that group, the tight end and a good one. Lionel Sykes, and they'll use as many as three tight ends, sometimes four, believe it or not, in the Pittsburgh offense. And they come out with a two tight end set here. Second and 10 for the Panthers at their own 24. Nothing doing for Swerve and Kervin Richards. Frank Blevins, the first man there. Fred, one of the things that Oklahoma really, really wanted to accomplish today was to be able to stop up the middle. Now, watch the play in here, Blevins. He's going to come from your uh, left-hand side of your screen and make the stop. He really was unblocked at that point. He got off of his block very quickly and got right to the tackle. As good a passing attack as Pittsburgh has, they didn't want to come up with a third down and nine to open things up. That's what they have. Three wide receivers set for the Panthers. Deep middle, and he's got it out there complete. And a first down for the Panthers as he got it to Chris Boyer. Pick up a 16. One of the things that Pittsburgh knew they were going to find today was Oklahoma playing a two-deep zone, and that's what they get here. You see the linebackers floating into the zone there. Now, what happened on the play was they had a nice slant play on. Defensive backs are playing back deep. You send that receiver across the middle and never catch the ball in the hole. And Belt, Van Belt showing the savvy. 
at quarterback that Paul Ackett talked to us about yesterday. First down, Pittsburgh. Again, the eye backfield, and it's Richards in the big hole. Into Oklahoma territory to the 45-yard line. You want to know why Kervin Richards is successful. Number one, he's getting good blocking from his offensive line. But his fullback, Derek Lewis, also throws a key block right there on the line of scrimmage. That opens up the hole. Kervin swerving, doing his thing out there in the open field. And with that carry, Kervin Richards has moved into the number three spot all time on the Pittsburgh rushing charts. And the only two ahead of him now, Craig Ironhead Hayward and Tony Dorsett. Those are not bad guys to have ahead of you or behind you running the football. Pretty good company. Just inside the Oklahoma 45 is Richards with a play fake. Van Pelt is intercepted. Chris Wilson, the linebacker. Brad, Alex Van Pelt is so good at the play action. You see the linebackers freeze right now. Now they release back. They tried to run the uh, fake off the counter OT. Now Van Pelt threw the ball downfield, but it was tipped up, and that's when it's dangerous. That ball is in the air, and that secondary back there for the, the Sooners is very alert and picking it up. And the Sooners go to work at their own 29-yard line. Steve Collins at the controls at quarterback. Wants to throw and go in deep and wide open. Otis Taylor. Touchdown. R.D. Lasher in for the point after, and I don't think he thought he'd be in quite this quickly. 7-0 <laughs> Oklahoma. Right, you know, you get so used to a team running the football so much, and right away say, hey, they're going to start off cranking the football right up the field. Now, nice fake right there by Steve Collins. He goes deep. And what happened was Otis Taylor faked his man. He took him to the middle of the field, gave him a little shake, and then he took off and got deep on him. And this kid can stretch it out. He runs about a 4-4, 40-yard dash. 7-0, Oklahoma in one play. Well, Oklahoma, it took them nine seconds to score after Chris Wilson's interception. Steve Collins hooks up with Otis Taylor, 71 yards and a touchdown. And Riddell right back out there to kick off again. Well, folks, we told you at the top of the game that Oklahoma was passing the football, <laughs> but we didn't expect it quite that quickly. <laughs> They've already bettered their passing marks from last week. Again, Glenn Duvo and Ricky Turner. They're deep for Pittsburgh. Glenn Duvall, just about the same spot. Bringing it out, he won't get to the 20 this time. Jason Belser, the first man to meet him on the special team. Now, one of the reasons why Oklahoma was successful in the play, it's play action. Now, I just want to show you the reaction of the linebackers. Okay, let's freeze it right about there, guys. Now, watch these two people right here. Those are the two li inside linebackers. And that tells you what that play action will do to you. You expect Oklahoma to run the football, and now, all of a sudden, he pulls back and throws a deep pass. And there goes Otis Taylor. Otis Taylor, good name for a wide receiver. Oh, no kind of reminds you of a guy that played for Kansas City, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Out of LaPorte, Texas, and a teammate of Kervin Richards. And these guys have been waiting for this matchup for three years. On the kicking team. And an offside on the kicking team. we we'll repeat the kick. So we'll do it all again. As we said, Otis Taylor and Kervin Richards, high school teammates, Dan, and they've been aiming for this one for a long time, and they talk just about every week and uh, yet this week uh, they hadn't had any contact we know <laughs> gotta gotta stay away from the opposition now if you're on special teams and you've got to go back on the field now and what just happened to both of these clubs and run back down that field about 60 yards in this heat this is something you do not appreciate remember 90 degrees at game time and as mike joy told us mid 90s already on the field 
We were walking on it the last couple of days at practice, and you can just feel that heat coming right up through your shoes. Riddell will tee it up again. Sophomore out of Bedford, Texas. And again, DeVoe and Ricky Turner will go back deep. Steve Israel twisted a knee on a punt return last week. He's the key return man for Pittsburgh. And DeVoe and Turner will bring it up a little closer as they await it to five. Short kick this time to the near side. And out of bounds. Another flag now. We may never get this one to Pittsburgh. Okay, so now they've run 100 <laughs> yards in a 90-degree heat, and now they make it a chance to run an additional 60. <laughs> Scoring drive for Oklahoma, as we said. One play, 71 yards, and about nine seconds for Otis Taylor. Otis Taylor was a member of the National Honor Society in high school, and his dad is a merchant marine. Hope he, uh, he knows that his son scored on a touchdown. <laughs> Gary Gibbs. Second season at Oklahoma. Seven and four last year. That's not bad for a lot of programs. Not good enough here in Norman. That's what the fans think. And got off to a great start last week. They beat UCLA 34 to 14. And boy, did they stifle the Bruins offense. But now they're going to have a little bit of a problem because Pittsburgh is going to get good field position on this kick. And they're now kicking off from the 25 yard line. This is almost like a free kick after his safety. They backed <laughs> it all the way up, teed it at the 25. Let's see if Riddell gets this one straight away. Kind of calm down the Sooner fans a little bit with three kickoff. Nice kick this time. DeVoe at the six. That got to the 26. And a loose ball. Oklahoma saying that they, they recovered. Let's get the official announcement. Everybody points, you know. It's important to point then. Referee in the middle of the pack, says Pittsburgh. Aaron Goins got down there. Made the hit. So the pit offense that drove into Oklahoma territory the first time before the interception set to go back to work. And they'll move it from their own 27-yard line. Let's go down to the sideline and Mike Joy. Well, last week, Oklahoma threw on the first play of the game from scrimmage, a short six-yarder. So this little stun gun offense against Pittsburgh, the clue we had was Lasher, they, though they took over deep in their own territory, he came right over to the practice net and started kicking as if anticipating the big play, and that's just what they got. Pittsburgh on first down, it's Richards. Broke a tackle. And he's got a first down out to the 39-yard line. One of the things that Kervin Richards has that is so valuable for a running back is that little move, that little slight shake in there that makes the defensive man miss, the first tackler miss. Now watch him on this play. Gets out to that corner, right at the perimeter. That little move right there. That's something that's very special in running backs and also the ability to take the punishment after he gets downfield. And he'll call him swerving for nothing. What a tailback. First down, Pittsburgh. Their own 39-yard line. Both wide outs to the near side. Richards again. And again, close to 10 yards. Jason Belser, the strong safety, put him down there. Defensively, Stacy Dillard, a big fella, at the nose. The front three, all big. Tom Backus and Scott Evans, a two-time all-big eight performer. The stand-up defensive ends, James Good and Frank Blevins who moved outside this year. The linebackers, maybe not a better duo in college football. Wilson already with an interception, and Joe Bowden they expect big, big things from on the Oklahoma defense. They're saying here at Oklahoma that Joe Bowden is the next great inside linebacker from Oklahoma. And, of course, they have had some tremendous people in there, Dante Jones and Brian Bosworth and all the rest. Second and short, Pittsburgh. And first down into Oklahoma territory goes Derek Lewis, the fullback. Secondary for the Sooners. Darnell Walker, a junior college transfer, a great cover guy on one corner. Charles Franks on the other. And the safeties. Belser, we just called his name a moment ago with a tackle, and Terry Ray on the other side. Folks at Oklahoma tell you that Darnell Walker gives them an opportunity now to play some man-to-man -man and some bump and run because he's got tremendous speed at that cornerback position. He'll be tested today, though, against this Pittsburgh offense. Pitt offense, second trip into Oklahoma's territory, this time of the 49, first down. 
Ed Bell wants to swing it out in the overshot. Kervin Richards. Tracy Gordon was out there in the flat covering, but Van Pelt just got too much on that one. You know, just based on the early going, it seems like uh, Alex Van Pelt is just a little bit off. The offense is just a little bit off in its timing. And uh, they need to settle down. They ran the football fairly successfully. Maybe that's what they need to do to get back in the groove. Got a young offensive line up there. Van Pelt, number 10 there, as you looked on, he's off to a one for four start. Lewis and Richards in the eye. Second and 10, Pittsburgh. Pitch to Richards, got it to the 45, picked up four. It's still going to bring up third down and six. Chris Wilson and Greg DeQuazy in on the stop. I tell you one thing, when, when uh, Kervin Richards goes back and looks at the tape of this game, he's going to say, on that play, the hole was just about two yards outside of that. If he had hit it outside where the blocking was really established, he was gone. We got a great vantage point of that up here, don't we? <laughs> yeah, we're up in the, in the bird's nest, about 300 feet away from the field. The game is a rumor from up here. <laughs> <laughs> Three wide receivers set for Pittsburgh as Chris Boyer joins Hurd and Truitt. Third and six. Van Pelt almost intercepted again. Joe Bowden had it in his hands, and Van Pelt had his tight end open. He just didn't get it out there Eric far Sim enough. Eric Simmons was running straight down, running a steam route. He was wide open. He was, there was nobody uh, in back of him, and uh, Van Pelt just dumps the ball short. You see Simmons right in the middle of your screen. He's open, and the ball's thrown short. He's not only open. If he gets it there, it's six. Nobody behind him. Ryan Greenfield will have to kick it away. Otis Taylor back deep. Look out for him. He's one for one today. <laughs> one touch and one touchdown. Greenfield, the left-footed putter. He blasts this one. Way out the back of the end zone, a 45-yard kick, and Oklahoma will have it at their own 20-yard line when we come back. Sooners up by seven. 10.37 to go first quarter here in Norman. Oklahoma in front, 7-0. Offensively, didn't have time to set it for you last time. Steve Collins with a touchdown pass already. He's the quarterback. Duell Brewer and Kenyon Rashid are his running backs. His wideouts already guess. And Ted Long is the Z-back, they call him. This time on the triple option. First man through and out across the 25, up near the 27-yard line is Mike McKinley. McKinley and Rashid will switch off at fullback. Here's the center, Randy Wallace, on the offensive front for Oklahoma. The Sooners are big up front. Sawatsky and Medis are the guards. The tackles Jeff Miller and Brandon Houston. And the tight end, Adrian Cooper. So the Sooners doing what they want so far. Pick up of seven. Second down and three. Close to the 29 goes McKinley. Pittsburgh defense drops him a yard short of the first down, led by nose tackle Richard Allen. Keith Hamilton and Sean Gilbert on the defensive line. Ricardo McDonald and Curtis Bray in the linebacking core. Inside, Craig Gobb, the leader, along with Prentice Wright. And the Pittsburgh defense trying to prevent Oklahoma here on third down and a long yard to go. Two tight ends set for the Sooners. Straight ahead, Collins. Close to see where they spot this one. He had to get to the 30-yard line. Pittsburgh defense stood him up right there, but I think he got enough. First down, Oklahoma. Something to look for at this Pittsburgh defense, those bookend defensive ends, uh, both Keith Hamilton and uh, Sean Gilbert, two real big defensive ends. Hamilton, 6'7", Gilbert, 6'6", six, six and 300 pounds, and uh, came off Prop 48 and has done fairly well uh, in, in the schoolwork now, so he's got an opportunity to play. Yesterday at practice, Gilbert actually made you look kind of small. <laughs> I appreciate that. First down, Oklahoma. Pick up a two for Brewer, and let's see, ball loose. Pittsburgh says they have it, but our referee, Sam Mathis, disagrees as they blow it dead after a pickup of two, second down and eight. Oklahoma getting a little bit fancier that time uh, running the uh, counter tray. They saw Pittsburgh do it earlier on, so they decided to go at it themselves. Running that backside guard and tackle, pulling them to the opposite side. Pittsburgh defense, I would think, Dan, right now, just trying to settle in after that bomb was dropped on them in the opening play. Yeah, that puts you a little bit out of sync. You want to try to settle down and, and make your adjustments now. Second down eight. 
shooters at their own 32. Is the pitch. Brewer got it near the 40, close to a first down. You know, we talked to uh, Fred Von Apen, the defensive coordinator of Pittsburgh, and he said one of the things that he wanted to stop Oklahoma from doing was getting that tail back out there, and he said running out of the chute. Now, you see him coming down the field. He's coming off a crown on the field, so it's like running downhill. And he said also with this multiple eye now, uh, Oklahoma's tailback is in a better position to get the pitch and hit the corner. That was interesting how he told us about the crown field and how these guys actually are running downhill. And he said as fast as they are to start with, they don't need any more advantage. He said he'd rather play them in a wheat field. <laughs> That's right. Third down and inches. And I don't know if they got the inches. McKinley is all wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. I don't think he got it. No, he's short on that one because the inside linebackers just stepped up and uh, blocked up the play. And they didn't get it. So Oklahoma's going to have to give it up. Ricardo McDonald made the first hit, and then he got help from his friends and stopped McKinley, who's upset with himself, short of the first down. McKinley had a nice, strong run uh, for a touchdown against UCLA last week, but came up short this time. Brad Riddell's been a busy kicker already today. His first punt, an end-over-end -end job. Hetzler is going to field it on the bounce. Takes it out of bounds near the 15-yard line. 46-yard punt. So Pittsburgh defense settles in. Oklahoma, though, still leading 7-0. 55 to go first quarter. Oklahoma in front, 7-0. Here in Norman. Oklahoma defense back on the field, minus one of their members, as a matter of fact. As James Good apparently has been injured in the ball game. That means Tracy Gordon has taken his spot at that stand-up defensive end. Let's go down to Mike Joy for an injury report. Mike? Brad Good sprained his right ankle. It was heavily taped, and they couldn't tell if it was broken or not. The trainers feared that it's only a sprain, so they took him back for x-rays. Uh, if everything proves negative, he may return. All right, Mike, thanks. Boy, James Good has got to feel like there's just somebody that doesn't want him to play football. Missed 87 with a knee injury, had a broken right hand, played with a cast in 88, and a broken leg against Iowa State. Ended his season last year. So now James Good out and x-ray again his ankle, and we'll keep you posted if we get an update. Well, the scores, the scores are on college football here at 7 nothing Oklahoma and Pittsburgh from its own 16-yard line. First down. Richards, again, got it out near the 20-yard line. Let's go to New York and Andrea Joyce for an uh, update on some other college football action. Andrea? Brad Elgins. And here in Norman, 7 0 Oklahoma. Pittsburgh with a second down and a long six. Van Pelt play action. Wide open, Truett, and he dropped the ball. Let's go. Orlando Truett may have heard footsteps on that one, and he didn't hold on near midfield. Well, you know, there, there was really no excuse for dropping the football, and uh, maybe one of the things that's affecting him a little bit is uh, he's coming off of that high crown, as we told you about before, but he just got to keep his eyes on the football and take it in. He saw 6'2", 192-pound <laughs> junior Terry Ray coming at him. It does affect your vision. <laughs> Van Pelt not off to a Alex Van Pelt type of start, that's for sure. That one he can do nothing about. The receiver's got to get his hands on the football and pull it in. He's got a three wide receiver set here on third and six. Sets up. Zips it out of the hands of Derek Lewis, his fullback. Incomplete. Fourth down coming up. Darnell Walker was covering out there, and Van Pell is one for seven. I think one of the things you have to give quarterbacks now is, uh, you know, drops. How many balls were dropped? Because if you put the ball in there and, and the receivers drop the football, such as in that case and the Truett case, uh, you know, that's his defense is that those receivers just have to hold on to the football. Ryan Greenfield can clear one out of here. Kicking from near his own end zone, and he blasted one last week against Boston College of 79 yards. It's helped his average of a little over 49. He can kick as deep as he wants here. Got a nice kick, too. Otis Taylor will call for the fair catch and takes it at the 32-yard line. 48-yard punt and no return. Otis Taylor with our only touchdown of the day. 7-0 Oklahoma. And coming up tonight, our doubleheader here on CBS. Notre Dame and Michigan going without Bo Schembechler. 
Uh, Gary Moeller's, they call him Little Bo there in Michigan. <laughs> he's been around here so long, they think that he's actually Bo's shadow. Oklahoma at its own 33-yard line. First man through in a big hole for Rashid to the 50. 17 yards for Kenyon Rashid on his first carry. Yeah, but there was a pancake block on the line of scrimmage. And I'm not sure who threw it from the backside. Right there, 92, Keith Hamilton gets pancaked on the play. And Rashid, with those size 16 feet, takes off down the middle. Now, the fullback in this offense has been the one that's been so effective early on for Oklahoma. Last year, Rashid, uh, last week, Rashid rushed for about 86 yards. And he was the leading rusher for Oklahoma. So the Sooners, great field position already at midfield. The pitch. Lewis steps inside, picked up almost seven. Richard Allen got over there from his nose tackle spot, along with Craig Gobb. Lewis in there, tailback, a junior out of Dallas. He and Duell Brewer will share that spot. See the average for Ike Lewis. Not too bad. They'll take that six anytime they can get it. He got up seven there. Second and three. Rashid to the 17. Twenty-six yards. Marcus Washington saved a touchdown. They call Kenyon Rashid and Earl Campbell with speed, and that's dangerous. Runs real low to the ground. Very powerful runner. Got hurt in high school and tore his knee up. And you can see he wears a knee brace at sometimes, and he doesn't have it on today. But one of the things he said was it affected a little bit his, his ability to shift. But he still runs a 4.640 at almost 230 pounds. And he has got quite a pair of platforms, doesn't he? Yeah, those dogs are pretty big. I compared them to mine. He's got me by about three or four inches. He's got maybe the biggest feet on the whole team. Here's Lewis near the 11th. And the fans here at Memorial Stadium in Norman, Oklahoma, liking what they see so far from their Sooners. It is 7-0 Oklahoma with 4.38 to go first quarter with Dan Jiggets and Mike Joy. I'm Brad Nessler. We welcome you. The CBS coverage of the college football season 1990. The first of two today, and both should be beauties. And Oklahoma off to a good start. Second down along four. Rashid, touchdown. Starring Kenyon Rashid. It's 13 nothing sooner. His mother told me yesterday, she said, uh, day before yesterday, she said, make sure you pronounce his name correctly. It's Kenyon, not Kenya. I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> However you say it, it was all him on that drive. Last year, the point after is good. And the Sooners explode here early in the first quarter. And leading Pittsburgh 14 to nothing. Fred, Kenyon Rashid is a, a young man who injured his knee in college. They said the ligament was holding on by a nerve, and uh, he came back. They thought he might not ever be able to play football again, but out of this option, nah, he's playing a whole lot of football. So he just steps over a couple of people and just bulldozes his way in the end zone. I don't think you have to block for him. <laughs> wow. Although he's getting some nice push up front from his offensive line. Brandon Houston up there, number 70, throwing a block. Larry Madis, 62. They call him Cadillac. Why? Because he's driving people all over the field. <laughs> 419 to go first quarter. And the Sooners now 14 to nothing. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game for each team. And for our 20, 20th consecutive year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. I always wondered how come an offensive lineman never won that thing, you know? <laughs> Maybe today's the day. <laughs> Sooners with 14 here in the first quarter at Paul Hackett has to be wondering what hit his team here early. We talked about time of possession and how important that was going to be and how Pittsburgh defensively had to prevent 
Oklahoma from getting big plays and particularly holding the football and running it down on the ground. And so far, Pittsburgh's defense has not been allowed to do that. Brad Riddell, a kick again. Ricky Turner, Black Duvall, the deep man for Pittsburgh. Duvall at the eight. Priest on the outside and got it across the 30 to the 31 where Ted Long put him down on the special team. 23 yard return. Scores. Temple with a win today. High there. Holy Cross and Army. Games that started earlier on the East Coast. Yale leading Brown. That's a. <laughs> I went to Harvard, so I don't like Yale too much. Harvard over Columbia. There you go. All right, here we go. <laughs> the guys are leading at halftime. I would think pretty key drive here early for Pittsburgh. You hate to put the pressure on them in the first quarter, Dan, but they got to get something going. It really is, though. You know, it's the kind of thing where you don't want it to, to end up uh, being Oklahoma dominating if you're Pittsburgh uh, dominating the clock. Half roll for Van Pell. Got it. Complete. Threw it. Took a lick at midfield, but first down, Pittsburgh. Alanda Truitt had a, a great ball game. Saw him last year, Brad, uh, down in the John Hancock Bowl. Really had a good football game. He started five games last season, and Pittsburgh, are, the people in Pittsburgh are expecting good things from him. He, now, Alex Van Pelt gets nice time there. Truitt runs a nice crisp route, and you can see that defense of Oklahoma is staying way off the ball and giving plenty of cushion to Truitt. Now, Truitt stays with this one. You see him pull a ball in there and tuck it in very nicely. That's what you got to do is put it away. But, boy, he took a shot when he caught it. But Quazy let him have it. Just on the Oklahoma side of midfield. First down for the Panthers. Richards got five, almost six. Out of the 44, Jason Belser up from his safety spot to make the hit. Kervin's got 50 yards already on seven carries. They told us that uh, Kervin Richards uh, during the offseason uh, started boxing uh, to keep himself in shape and they feel like uh, he came back to camp this year in the best shape that they've ever seen him in. See he's moving up the all-time rushing list at Pittsburgh. Past Elliott Walker with his first carry of the day. Donnell Dickerson in at quarterback and he stopped for no gain. Chris Wilson made the hit. We knew we'd see Darnell Dickerson sometime today at either quarterback or wide receiver. We'll see him in a quarterback in. Yeah, you know, Paul Hackett feels like he wants to get him involved in the offense. It feels he's too good an athlete not to get on the field somehow or another now. They say he may move him outside, split him out some, and let him run from the flanker position or the wide receiver position, but uh, they feel like they've got to get him out there and get him moving. Now, he's back in school. He was out last year uh, because of academic problems. He went to summer school and got everything squared away. He's back out of the lineup, too. And Van Pelt back in on third down. Play action. Really got a rush. Got the pass away anyway. And a first down to his fullback. Derek Lewis takes it out near the 35-yard line. 2.26 to go first quarter. And the Sooners in front, 14 to nothing. Tom Back has really put a nice rush on Alex Van Pelt that time. Now, that's a nice play, though. See, now that's when you start getting back into the groove a little bit as a quarterback because you know that Oklahoma defensive line is going to get up there and put some pressure on you. they got some big folks up front. Stacy Dillard, the nose tackle, 6'7", 280. Junior out of Clarksville, Texas. Evans and Backus, the other two tackles. But he mentioned Evans is all big eight, two years in a row. First down, pit. Richards, another tough run inside the 30, down near the 28-yard line. He's picking up about seven yards at a crack the way he's going here. You know, it seems to me that, uh, you know, after talking to everybody, I said both of these teams are looking how to, you know, they want to establish their character now. What kinds of teams are they going to be? For uh, Pittsburgh, their offensive line is trying to mature now and come together as a group. They've all had opportunities to play in the past, but now they're playing together uh, as a group for the first time uh, this season. That Pittsburgh offensive line doesn't have some of the big names of past Pittsburgh teams like the Jimbo Coverts and the Bill Freilichs and the Mark Mays and the Tom Ricketts, but they kind of take that on as a challenge. They've done a good job so far today. Second and three. Short of the first down is Lewis, the fullback, trying to follow the block of Sykes' his tight end there. He looked inside, maybe about another hole inside. I think he might still be running, though. There was a nice hole uh, created up inside. He's trying to punch it through about the five hole, and I think it was more like the three hole. 
And with the clock running down near the one-minute mark, 118 and moving along here first quarter, Panthers with a key third down situation. Third down about a yard. They'll stack it in with the extra tight ends. And Kelp covers it. I don't see a flag, but somebody jumped early, it appeared. It appeared that Chris Sestelli snapped the football uh, maybe a, a, a count early because I don't think uh, Van Pelt was ready for it. Let's watch Chris Sestelli right in the middle of your screen. He snaps the ball and nobody else is moving, so apparently he missed the snap count. Oh, that's a lonely feeling, isn't it, for a quarterback? Oh, boy. Wasn't quite ready for that one. Get low and go. And now, instead of the first down, it is fourth down and almost four to go. Scott Kaplan going to try to put Pittsburgh on the board here. This will be a 46-yard field goal attempt. Kaplan from 46. No problem. Pittsburgh on the board with a long field goal. Kaplan told us to make sure that we say hello to his parents because they are celebrating their anniversary. There's a guy that knows how to stay in good at home. Stay in good with a coach, too, if you hit those long field goals. 14-3, Oklahoma. Pittsburgh had the drive going well, but then the early snap that Van Pelt wasn't ready for, and uh, that play backfired, and so they had to settle for three. Well, one of the things Pittsburgh is looking at in this game is say when they play Oklahoma, you know, it's a it's a step up, it's another level. Now, if they want to, if they can win this game, then they say now we feel like we've really gotten up to that upper echelon of uh, college football teams. But they're having their problems early on. It's not like playing Ohio U or Boston College. And they feel like if they could get by Oklahoma, their schedule is so difficult near the end that maybe this would send them on their way against the Syracuse and West Virginia and some of those people before they hit Notre Dame and Miami and Penn State. Uh, they've got a wicked schedule. Otis Taylor's going to try to get the crowd into it down near his end zone. Sandro will tee it up for Pittsburgh. Freshman kicker out of Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Otis Taylor and Duell Brewer, the deep duo for the Sooners. <laughs> Alessandro's kick. Taylor at the nine. Look out. To the 35, Lewis Riddick, All-American candidate in the secondary, made the stop on the special teams. Taylor got 27 on the return. Steve Collins and the Oklahoma offense to work from its own 36-yard line. Collins, the sophomore, 6'2", 195. A little bit of quarterback controversy brewing here in Oklahoma. Uh, Kale Gundy, who they signed as a young freshman, uh, is a real passing quarterback, 7,000 yards in high school. We'll see him sometime today. First man is McKinley. Got a yard, that's about all. Interior front for Pittsburgh. Pulled him down there. McKinley and Rashid will shuttle in and out at that fullback position. And so far, you compare statistics for the two. It's been all Rashid who had by the way, 54 of the 67 yards on Oklahoma's scoring drive. And there's the gun to end quarter number one with a score, Oklahoma 14, Pittsburgh 3. And we'll return to Memorial Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. First 15 minutes belong to the Sooners, 14 to 3 as we start the second quarter. And the Oklahoma offense with a pitch is Ike Lewis. Lewis still on his feet. Touchdown. He somehow avoided the sideline and went 63 yards for the score. Who 
says the option I is in a big play offense. Huh? <laughs> Artie Lasher in for the point after. 21 to 3, Oklahoma. Right, what happened on the play was uh, simply that Pittsburgh defensively had a couple of slips in the missed tackle. Now, Gob 46 avoids the block right there. Now he slips down. Now, when he hits the corner, you see a couple more slips and blocks, and he is gone at outstanding speed. It looked like he might have stepped out just right down there at about the 30 yard line. And uh, we're going to try to take another peek at that. Let's see if he stepped out of bounds here along that sideline. Oh, what a tightrope. Oh, oh he stepped is. out of bounds at about the 30 yard line, it appeared. It goes up as a 63-yard touchdown, Oklahoma 21-3. One play into the second quarter, Oklahoma 21, Pittsburgh 3. Shouldn't be 21-3. We'll tell you more about that one after the kickoff from Brad Riddell. Glenn DeVoe and Ricky Turner. Deep for Pitt. DeVoe with the four. Across the 20 out near the 23-yard line. Mike Coates made the stop on the special team. The reason I said it shouldn't be 21, let's take a look. Now for all of you that don't like instant replay, watch what happens here, though. He goes out of bounds, clearly steps out of bounds with two feet, and then takes it off back down to the field. Mike Lewis on the run. Now, here's another look at it. We could see it from up here. We were wondering how come the officials on the sideline didn't see it. He's standing right there, but probably what happens is he's looking at the upper body instead of looking down and looking at the sideline. Mike Lewis with the long touchdown, capped a 64-yard drive in two plays, and there you see the total offense in all Oklahoma. And Pell on the roll. Incomplete. Intended for Truett out there on the corner. Let's go to New York for an update from the Southeastern Conference. Brad, the radio call-in shows went wild last week when Alabama lost to Southern Miss. This blocked pump by Florida gives the Gators a 17-10 lead with 11 minutes left in the fourth in, of all places, Tuscaloosa. Let's go back to Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggins. All right, Andrea, thank you. Boy, Gene Stallings off to a tough start for yeah. Alabama. Had a tough go of it when he was in Phoenix with the Cardinals, and now he goes to Alabama, and just things just haven't turned out well for him so far. And Steve Spurrier getting the job done at this point with the Gators. Second and ten, Pitt at its own 23. Richards, nice run. May have a first down. Broke two tackles before Bowden knocked him out of bounds. Brad, what do you do now if you're Pittsburgh? You're down, uh, you know, 21-3. How do you get back in the ball game? Well, one of the ways that you're going to have to do it is by running the football and again keeping that offense of Oklahoma off the football field. Now Gary Gibbs on the other side has got to feel very pleased with the development so far in this ball game. They've accomplished the things that they set out to do. Clemson just gets by Maryland. Boy, Coach Preback had Maryland rolling. Ken Hatfield gets his Clemson Tigers a one-point win. The play-action pass is such an integral part of the Pittsburgh offense. They've got to keep running the football to make their passing game work. Two tight ends set here. Richards with a play fake. Van Pelt with a deep ball. And almost intercepted. Jason Belser. Actually closer to that one than true it was. And Van Pelt really aired that off after the, after the play fake. But the Oklahoma defense does the job. Nice play faking. I, we talked about uh, Alex Van Pelt's play action. You see him right there. He hides that ball on the hip. Now, you see the defense reaction. Everybody is up in there. But when Truett was running down the field, Belzer stayed with him deep. And Truett right here goes up and tries to slap the ball away, which is a good move for the receiver to make if he knows he has no shot at catching the football. So Pittsburgh desperately in need of some offense. And they have to give it up. Three and out. Greenfield for the punt. Otis Taylor's going to let it go, and it reaches the end zone. 68-yard punt, but they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. That's where the Sooner offense will have it when we come back. 14-15 to go, first half.
Welcome back to Oklahoma, where Pitt's approach to stopping the Oklahoma offense has been intense pressure on the quarterback to break up the option. And on a lot of plays, Collins has been getting up very slowly. But now they're working with their linebackers because they're not filling in properly, and that's allowing Oklahoma to break open the big play. All right, Mike. First down for Oklahoma at its own 20-yard line, and they've got the 21-3 lead here in the second quarter. First man, Rashid, got about three. 21 to three here. Let's get another update from New York. Brad, last year, Washington State upset BYU in Provo, and they're looking to do it again. Second quarter, Washington State's Alvin Dunn intercepts Ty Detmer, returns at 25 yards for a touchdown. Washington State dominating, but remember, they're playing the wide-open whack. Let's go back to Brad Nessler and Van Jiggins. BYU coming out of that big win over Miami and having a shaky day of it. Oklahoma not having that trouble here on their home field after their win over UCLA. They're racking it up against the Pitt Panthers as Duell Brewer got it out near the first down. One of the things you have to hope happens if you're on that Pittsburgh defense is that you can you can contain that line a little bit, keep them from getting off and getting to your, your linebackers. Now, the Oklahoma offensive line is doing an excellent job of getting on their blocks and staying on them and maintaining that contact and finishing the blocks. Rashid got a nice comeback there for the block. It's still going to be third down and short. Collins may be the guy to do it himself in the option eye. Let's see. Pitch and a fumble. Pile up. Pittsburgh says they have it. Unusual to pitch the ball when the running back is that close to you. You know, you turn around, he's only about two or three yards away from you. He's got to have some fast hands and fast eyes to get the ball and then hit up in the hole. Ricky Brady, the tight end, recovered it. And watch how quick this ball is pitched. You see, it's only about a two or three yard difference between the quarterback and the uh, halfback. No gain after Brady recovered the Sooner fumble, and so they'll have to give it up. Riddell into punt. Doug Hetzler, number 24, right there, back deep for the Panthers. Nice kick. Hetzler at the 26. Oh, and he swarmed under. Great job on the special teams. A 45-yard kick. And Mike Coach, for the second time today on the special teams, makes a big hit. Tomorrow at CBS, the NFL Today gets things going for us at 12.30. A big game in the NFC Central, the Bears and the Packers. A lot of talk going back and forth between those two clubs. Tony Mandrich doing a lot of talking. Four o'clock, many of you will see Washington and San Francisco, or the Giants in Dallas, New Orleans, and Minnesota. Check the local listings for the game and time in your area. NFL Today, one of the things they'll have is a look at the man in black, Jerry Glanville, a new head coach of the Atlanta Falcons, and he's got the Falcons off to a great start. They play at Detroit tomorrow. First down, Pittsburgh. Keep it on the ground, Richards. Kirvin. Again, is going about seven yards every time he touches it, it seems. Got it out to the 34-yard line. He's running against an Oklahoma defense, though, is just suffocating. Last week against UCLA, they really contained the UCLA offense and rushed the passer very successfully. Had six sacks against uh, UCLA. Did we say it seems like seven yards a carry? Ten carries, 73 yards. Pretty close. Second down at three. Hit at its own 34. Oklahoma changes up their front and Van Pelt likewise with the audible call. Richards first down across the 40. Chris Wilson tripped him up. Kervin Richards, a junior, two years and great numbers. And the same could be said for Tony Dorsett. And there's the comparison. Richards came into the season only 180 yards off Tony Dorsett's pace, and uh, he's well on his way. Who knows? Of course, Tony D had a big, big senior season, which helped him to 6,000-plus as the NCAA leader. But Kervin Richards, I think, probably uh, thinks maybe he can be the man to catch him. First down, Pitt. Matt Pelt in the middle to his tight end. To midfield, to Eric Seaman. Pickup of seven, almost eight. 
Eric Seaman, the tight end, has lost 15 pounds this season, and he's down to 230, and they feel that that's helping him run his routes a little bit better. But Van Pelt is on the rollout here. You see him coming out, and one of the things that he's doing now is settling down and getting comfortable in the passing game. Early on, it seemed like he had the jitters, though, and uh, now he's getting a little bit more comfortable. Now, watch those linebackers. You see that play action works so well because those linebackers have to sit up in there and read, is Kervin Richards coming at me? And just that split-second hesitation that's all you by need Bowden, to, that's all you need. Get that tight end behind him. Second down, a long yard. Nice hit, but it uh, looks like it's going to be a first down for Derek Lewis. Bowden got out there to make the stop. Lewis, a sophomore. 6-2-2-25. And they move the change. First down, Pitt. Pitt had several opportunities against Boston College last week. They seemed like they spent the whole game in B.C. territory, and they still only led 15 to nothing at halftime in that game, and they've had several trips now to Oklahoma. I think against B.C., the, out of the 53 uh, rushing attempts, uh, they were down there 65 times, and 53 of them, they were inside. Uh, BC territory. We might need that again today to get back in this one. Trailing 21 to 3. Alex Van Pelt, plenty of time. Threw it to his safety valve out in the flat. To the 40 is Kervin Richards. Jason Belser over there to bring down Kervin. Jason belser has got some good bloodlines. His dad played for the Kansas City Chiefs, and uh, he's really come on in his Oklahoma secondary, one that they have really built around JUCO's uh, junior college transfers. But Belson's been here for a couple of years now and is one of the more vocal leaders back there in that secondary. It's interesting, we were talking with him the other day. It's a nice look at him. He's an uh, undergraduate studies from Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, they were saying that they would hope that their defensive line wouldn't get quite the push that they've been getting because they wanted to show exactly what they could do against a passing team. Second down, a long three. Nice play fake by Van Pelt again. Running out of time. Flags are down, and Van Pelt goes down at the 40. Let's see if we have a holding call inside. Flag right in the middle of the field. Dillard and Gordon finally brought Van Pelt down. We'll get another look. Kervin Richards going up inside, and Stacy Dillard tackles him and just drives him to the ground. You got to let those backs escape if it's a pass. There goes Stacy. You know, every those big guys always get the big numbers, 77, 99. They always make them look bigger. <laughs> oh, conference call. Sam Mavis is our referee. Maybe a holding call against Oklahoma. I thought it was going to go the other way. Trying to clear Alex Van Pelt out of there. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Can't do anything with those quarterbacks. No politics down there. <laughs> Here's a call. Regard the holding penalty. Pick it up. They'll disregard the penalty. Nine minutes and 34 seconds to go in the half here in Norman, Oklahoma. At Memorial Stadium, where it's been all Sooners on the scoreboard. 21 to 3. Brad Nessler, Dan Jiggets, and Mike Joy along with you here in Norman. Paul Hackett and his Pitt Panthers trying to get back in this football game after some big plays. Actually, Pitt's got more first downs than Oklahoma, but you don't need first downs when you go 71 yards and 63 yards. <laughs> when you pop the clock, it doesn't make any difference <laughs> how many first downs you got. <laughs> Third down and three. Would have been a nice catch. Almost picked off. Sykes, the tight end, the intended receiver. And Chris Wilson back there in the what, linebacking core made a hit. What coverage by Chris Wilson. He's a communications major. You see him right in the middle of your screen. Wears glasses, and they say, he remind you of Clark Kent a little bit. <laughs> but you see it right there. He's just draped all over. Nice coverage on the play. So Pittsburgh will give it up. Brian Greenfield again to punt. His fourth punt. He's got a 68-yarder already today. But he'd like to keep it out of the end zone. And can he do it this time? Oh. I think so. Nice coverage by Pittsburgh. That one hit on the nose and bounced back out. And so for the first time today, Oklahoma's going to be in a bit of a hole offensively. But they've got things going their way. 21-3. Oklahoma over Pittsburgh, 8.52 to go in the half. Let's take it down to the sideline and Mike Joy. 
Brad, the ghosts of football greats roam this stadium as Oklahoma celebrates 100 years as a university in 94 with a football team. That's underscored as you walk in Coach Gibbs' office. He's trying to continue the Wilkinson and Switzer traditions, and as he sits behind him, desk, behind him are lined up those three big Heisman trophies. Such symbolism. I'm only a second-year coach, but look what's behind me backing me up here. A lot of tradition at Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah you kind of have to like like his uh, interior decorator, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> All those All-Americans on the wall. <laughs> Bold trophies everywhere. Oklahoma working inside its own five for the first time today. Mike Lewis got it out across the five, and that's about it. You're coming out of your, uh, near your own end zone as an offense. One of the things you want to do is keep uh, keep things under control. Don't try to get too fancy up in here. Run your fullback up under maybe in the one or two lots right by the center. The same thing with your tailback. But keep it snug in there and don't want to be throwing the ball around. That option can be dangerous. You miss the pitch, drop the ball as they have once today already, but they did recover their own fumble. This would be a bad spot for it. This is never a good spot. Second and eight. Collins keeps out near the eight-yard line. Still going to bring up third down and long. Brad, we were talking earlier about the uh, quarterback controversy that was brewing here in Oklahoma for a while with Cale Gundy, the freshman, who they feel is a passing quarterback. And Steve Collins, though, says that he's able to throw the football. He's just got to get some opportunities. One of the things that Oklahoma is trying to accomplish, and Gary Gibbs talks about it an awful lot, is move football here into the 90s offensively, and that's what they feel they have to do to get there. Steve Collins missed six games last year with a broken finger on his throwing hand. Whistle stop this one before Oklahoma can get it going. They really buried Steve Collins, did the Panthers. He got waxed Ooh. when he pitched that out or handed it off. Ricardo McDonald said hello to Collins. Looks like an illegal procedure call coming up. <laughs> Steve Collins is saying, you're telling me it was illegal. <laughs> <laughs> I got mugged. Dead ball, illegal procedure on the offense. Still third down. Third down, almost 11 now coming up. Watch Collins as he pulls out. Now, he fumbled the ball just a little bit briefly there, but, boy, he just got crunched after he handed that ball off. It's Keith Hamilton in there. The Keith's probably one of the best defensive ends in college football. Collins wants to throw from his own end zone. Threw that one into the Pittsburgh bench. Almost hit roll one. Intended for Otis Taylor, and now the Sooners will be backed up and have to kick from their own end zone. Here's a look at what Steve Collins is seeing downfield. Now, it's a little low angle here. Tucks that ball away. He's starting to learn that play action now, and that's one of the things that he's going to have to develop as a quarterback, but he gets body slammed there by Keith Hamilton rushing in from uh, that right side. Brad Riddell now with his back foot on the end line. Just got it away in a hurry. End over end punt. And I'm not sure why Doug Hetzler called a fair catch. He had about... 12 yards of green in front of him, 46-yard kick. The only thing I can think of, Brad, is he is looking directly up in the sun from that direction if you're going to feel the ball. But uh, he had about 20 yards open area in front of him. Mets in the National League East, of course. Their pennant race going with Pittsburgh, and they've got a lead. Don't forget tonight on CBS, our college football doubleheader to start for a little angle, you know. One of the all-time great sandbaggers in college football history. Van Pelt, great play, fake the spin, and a deep ball, far sideline, but he overshot Hosea Hurd, who was open. Hosea Hurd was wide open on that sideline, and Paul Hackett told us we can expect big things from Hosea Hurd. And certainly, at that opportunity, if Van Pelt had gotten the ball to him, he'd have been gone. Van Pelt seems cool, as you mentioned, Dan, but his numbers don't reflect that, do they? Five out of 15. He's had a couple of drop balls. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, we have to give him the two drops. Paul Hackett, the cerebral approach to coaching on the sideline, talking about wanting to use more than just 11 players offensively. He told us, I want 15, 16 guys involved as much as possible. Richards, nice cutback. Lost the ball. It appeared that Pitt recovered it. 
Jason Belser, the guy trying to cover it for Oklahoma. Let's see if he got there first. Still no official signal. I think Belser's on the bottom of the pile, though. And now we have a flag on the play as well. Well, also down there is Chris Sestilli, the center. So who's got it? Bill Meyer, the offensive uh, coordinator and offensive line coach, is out there pulling his guys off and trying to calm them down. But the offensive line doesn't want to give up the ball now. They've got good field position. Dead ball personal foul. They still haven't officially told us who's got the football, but Pittsburgh is coming off the field and Oklahoma's going off the field. Talked about Jason Belser and how he brings a load back there. You watch him on this play. He's number 29 for Oklahoma. Number 29 in red. Right there, strips the ball out from Kerbin Richards. Ball's loose on the turf. And you see Pitt had an opportunity to recover, but watch Belson right here. Puts his helmet on the ball and just pops it right out away from Kerbin Richards. He got the hit and the recovery, I think. If he'd have picked it up and ran it up for the score, it would have been the trifecta. <laughs> And we've talked a lot about Belzer already today. Yeah, well, you know, he told us the other day at practice he wanted to get some kiss, some air time, and he's getting <laughs> it. But he's making all the plays to get it. Had an interception and nine tackles last week against UCLA, and he's all over the field again today. So the Sooners take over at the 42 following the personal foul penalty. Oh, Collins got a lot on that one. Overshot his intended receiver, already guess. Yeah, one of the reasons why he did was you saw Keith Hamilton right in his line of vision. Keith, as we mentioned, 6'7". When he jumps up, he's about 10 feet up in the air, so Collins is trying to get it over top of him. And watch at the top of your screen, number 92 is Hamilton. And he takes three steps across, and he just gets airborne, and that makes it very difficult for a quarterback to see downfield. Come on now, play this game. There's a good look at Hamilton. Big rush man last year as a freshman, had nine sacks. Made a lot of people freshman All-American lists. A delayed give to Lewis. And he slips as he crosses the 40. Got near the 39, where it's going to be third down at about seven. Craig Gobb there on the stop. Brett, sometimes you run a play like that, that draw, because you want to take advantage of that hard upfield rush. Now, saw Keith Hamilton coming upfield on, on a previous play. This time, they let him come up, and they come right back up underneath where he left with the draw play. So here's a third down where most teams would throw. Hey, Oklahoma's throwing now. <laughs> <laughs> You've got that option eye that looks quite a bit like a loose ball. And a loose ball again. Pittsburgh might have this one. The fullback left it at the 35. Either way, it's not going to be a first down as Kenyon Rashid lost the handle on it. That's also good tackling, You're reaching in and stripping that ball out. And Oklahoma maintains possession, but still faces a fourth and a long two. Oklahoma's going to take a timeout. Fans wanted Gary Gibbs and company to go for it. Steve Collins wasn't sure. He calls a timeout with 5.58 to go in the half. Sooners controlling this one here in Norman. to go for it here on fourth down at two. Oklahoma's run it up pretty well. The rushing statistics. Almost three yards to go here on fourth down. Pitch to Lewis. First down and a lot more. Ike needed three. He got 11, Dan. Lewis uh, faked, I think it was Chris Gobb out of his protective gear out on the <laughs> perimeter. He said one of the things that Pittsburgh had to do was protect that perimeter, and right there, Lewis, a nice little shake and bake. Oklahoma keeps right on moving to the 23 of Pittsburgh, first of 10. Mike Lewis near 100 yards here in one half of football. about 95 or 96 yards after that carry. John Baker in on the stop 
as the Sooners move it down near the pit 18-yard line. Brad, one of the interesting things was, was uh, with Oklahoma's offense last week was that the tailbacks only average about 3.6 yards, and the fullbacks are averaging about 5.6. So now it's the flip side. We're seeing more of that tailback position. Coming up at halftime, it's the college football today with Andrea Joyce and Mike Francesa. And uh, we're going to hear from Bo Schembechler and Lou Holtz, too. We'll have scores and highlights from the day in college football. Score here, 21-3, Oklahoma. First man through near the 16s, Rashid. You know, typically what happens, though, when that situation develops, like we talked about last week in the UCLA game, is that the defense sees that and they say, hey, look, we really have to make an adjustment to stop the fullback because the tailbacks aren't that effective. Now, Oklahoma is missing one of their tailbacks, and that's Mike Geddes, a guy who they thought uh, was a legitimate Heisman candidate. He's out with a knee. We saw him the other day at practice, and he's out trying to run now. He's got a brace on it, but has the same kind of injury that Blair Thomas had when he was at Penn State. We only hope that Mike gets back as well as Blair Thomas did. Rashid with a flag down inside the 10. It'll be first and goal, but I thought I saw a marker down. Maybe not. Kenyon Rashid. We were telling a story earlier about uh, when he got hurt in high school. He was 15 years old when he tore his knee up, and the uh, doctors were afraid to tell him that uh, maybe he would never be able to play again. And he didn't know it, so he just kept uh, rehabbing himself and got back into great condition. They said had he not been a kid who was 16, 17 years old, he may not have come back if he was 23 or 24 trying to rehab that knee, and they really didn't tell him how bad it was. Today, he's done a great job. So is this man, Lewis. This time, stopped very short game. Lewis really got over there from his safety spot. One of the things that will be interesting to see out of this Oklahoma option eye is uh, throwing to the backs. And that's one thing that uh, Rashid mentioned to us the other day that he would like to see. He says, I've got soft hands, you know. I <laughs> want to get the ball. We told Gary Gibbs that. I don't think Gary was buying no, all No, he of wasn't it. at all. <laughs> He'd rather have him tote the football on those big <laughs> six, 16, uh, size 16 shoes. Gary Gibbs, a youthful looking coach, and he is young. 16 years, though, in this program. Again, stop for no game is Rashid as the Pittsburgh defense stiffens. And that's going to bring up third down and goal. Derek Hicks inside, got one of the hits for Pittsburgh. We talked about time of possession and how you have to keep this Oklahoma offense off the field if you're the Pittsburgh defense, and today they just have not been able to do it. Already Oklahoma's got 195 yards. You know, they had only 81 rushing yards against them a week ago. Boston College only had 81 yards. There's two backs here alone today for Oklahoma that have more than that. Third goal of the seventh. Rashid, touchdown. Artie Lasher in for the point after. It's good. Three minutes and 16 seconds to go in the half. And Pittsburgh getting blasted by the Sooners, 28-3. One of the things that this option eye allows you to do as an offense is play a little smash mouth. And right there, there's a nice key block up inside. And Rashid does the rest. Kenyon Rashid has got powerful legs. Just keeps driving straight towards the end zone. Now, here's another peek at it. He Locks ran right through Prentice right here at the end. Good blocking by his offensive line as well. That was Terry Manning, uh, one of the players they feel they can move around to a lot of positions on that uh, Oklahoma offensive line. He's number 64. Key block on the play. Booner Schooner has been uh, Booner Schooner has been busy today. Going to hyperventilate after a while. <laughs> <laughs> Kenyon Rashid with his second touchdown of the day. Let's go down to Mike Joy on the sidelines. Mike. Well, wider tires and racing mean more traction and a better gain. <laughs> Here it is, size 16, Kenyon Rashid. Now, if it looks big from this camera angle, I'm a nine and a half. 
No contest. In fact, I could probably get both feet in here, but boy, does it give him some traction, and has he got wheels. <laughs> hey, Mike, did you have to get a ticket to get that? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you a boat, Mike, and you can do a little skiing down there. Well, Rashid's had those 16s in the end zone twice. Good football player, and uh, he's a journalism major, and uh, looks forward maybe to getting into this business. It'd be interesting to... <laughs> I think he's got a future, though. <laughs> Another look at it. I mentioned that Manning, number 64, came over through a nice block. You saw it right there. That sprung him inside. You know, Rashid almost ran over Collins, his quarterback, who was trying to give it to him. And he has 78 yards on nine carries and two touchdowns. Riddell really got into this one. No run back this time. Pittsburgh will work from its own 20. And they've got 316 to go here in the quarter to try to get something on the board things got going in a hurry for Oklahoma their first pass Steve Collins to Otis Taylor wide open 71 yards it was seven nothing Oklahoma then Kenyon Rashid tacked on another touchdown with 11 yard run Pittsburgh on the board with Scott Kaplan's 46 yard field goal but back came the Sooners Ike Lewis who stepped on the sideline but still got credit for a 63 yard touchdown and then Rashid moments ago from seven and it's 28 to three Gary Gibbs, former defensive coordinator under Barry Switzer, and eight and four as a head coach coming into this one. The fullback, Lewis, got a couple, that's all. What's Pittsburgh got to do here, Dan, now to try to get back in this thing? Well, you hate to say the word panic, but uh, I think what they've got to do now is they've got to start getting creative with the passing game. Uh, play action now is not really a factor because they're so far behind. They've got to start boosting this thing now and throwing it downfield. I think one of the things we're going to look for is try to get into these pockets that are created by this Oklahoma zone. See what they do here. Held on second and long. Has a pocket there, but the man didn't hold it. Threw it. Truett's had a couple skip through his hands today. Yeah, that's about the third one that uh, Van Pelt has had uh, a receiver drop or just let go. And uh, that's been one of the problems that they've had offensively. Now watch his reaction after he throws this one. He knows he's got it right where he wants it. Hmm. The picture says it all. Orlando Truitt, number 80, the sophomore. Had a big game last week. And today he's struggling a bit. Third nine. Pitt. Just outside its own 21. Deep middle. He didn't hold on again. You know, it'd be interesting to see uh, Orlando Truitt's hands, and if uh, you see he's got a bunch of sweatbands on and a bunch of tape, uh, maybe he's got a little bit of a problem with some sweat running down his arms or something. I'm looking for anything to help him out, but he's just dropped too many balls today. His concentration is way off. Looked like he had a little smile coming off the field until Coach Hackett gave him one on the backside, and the smile dissi dissipated in a hurry. <laughs> Another punting situation. Otis Taylor back deep inside his own 30. Greenfield's got... A lot of leg and has used it well today. Just when I say that, he knocks a line drive kick. I thought it touched one of the pit players up near the 35. That's right, I think you're exactly correct. Looked like Vernon Lewis, maybe. And they're going to spot this one back near the 35 yard line. Coming up at halftime, college football today. Andrea Joyce and Mike Francesa will be along with you. And we'll have scores and highlights from the day in college football. And we'll also hear from Bo Schembechler. And Lou Holtz. I don't think uh, Andrew's going to allow Lou Holtz to hoodwinker into thinking that they shouldn't be number one right now. That's right, Andrew. Don't let it, <laughs> Lou. Don't run him any slack. <laughs> Just inside the 36, OU goes back to work with 2:26 to go in the half, and they have dominated this football game, 28 to three. Get the look down from behind the Sooners, and now. Georgia comes back. He's got by Southern Miss in the SEC. Lewis, he's over 100 yards and over the 40 to the 42-yard line. Ricardo McDonald out there to make the stop. Lewis a little slow to get up. He might just be tired. He's had a big day work already in the first half. One of the things that Fred Von Avon, the uh, defensive coordinator for Pitt, told us is that uh, if you allow this option to get going, he said that the uh, chain crew over there on the sideline might be in a lot of trouble <laughs> later on in the games that you might have to water them down. 
105 yards for Lewis on nine carries. Here he comes. First down. And got it to the Pittsburgh 45. Late hit, too, I believe. Flags down on the far side. Marcus Washington and Curtis Bray combined on the stop. And there's the call. Personal foul against the Panthers. They don't need that on top of what no, this young man's already doing. Sometimes too. you get frustrated in these situations. And you, you know, you make some foolish uh, errors and mistakes. And that's the case right now for Pitt on defense. They're getting frustrated because they cannot stop this offense of Oklahoma. Now, here's a shot of the play. Now, he's clearly down. Lewis is down. And I believe that's Bray that just comes over and puts the shot on him. Yep. Unnecessary and foolish. So that moves it to the 30-yard line. Boy, we talked about Mike Gaddis, who was on his way to having a great year before his injury, and he hopefully will be a great back for Oklahoma again in the future. The guys they have today are getting the job done. McKinley, the fullback, broke a tackle. Barrels his way to the 10. Twenty-one yards for number thirty-one. See, if you're getting matchups one-on-one up front, what uh, is happening for Oklahoma again? Another key block by Manning, sixty-four again. That springs McKinley through that line of scrimmage, and then when he gets out there in the secondary, there is no one there to stop him until he gets ten, fifteen yards downfield. You get one-on-one matchups up, up front, and your people are getting their blocks. You're in good shape. Pitch to Lewis on first and goal. Ball came loose. And scooped up by Pittsburgh. Derek Hicks got that one on the hop. And a big discussion on the far side of the field. Pittsburgh football. Derek Hicks, redshirt sophomore out of Detroit. Big hits coming from the left-hand side of your screen right there, and that strips the ball out. There's another one. Gobb, 46, and puts his hand in there and punches the football out. It is recovered by Pittsburgh and advanced out a new rule in college football in that you can advance a fumbled ball if it is beyond the line of scrimmage. They don't want cheap touchdowns, and that one was beyond the line of scrimmage, so scooped up, run out to the 16, and that is where Pittsburgh has it offensively with 1.10 to go. At this point, Paul Hackett's got to be saying, hey, look, if we can maybe get down and get a score, but you don't want Oklahoma back on the board before you go in at, at the half. You sure don't want to throw an interception either. Alex Van Pelt, deep sideline, and incomplete. Boyer got his hands on it, and then he really got tagged. Terry Ray put the hit on it. You know how those fighter pilots talk about getting toned on somebody, you know, when they, <laughs> they lock up the crosshairs? That's kind of what happened in that situation. You can see Terry Ray coming all the way from the middle of the field. He got toned on him right here mm. when he just knocked him out. Wow. Think about all those Oklahoma uh, secondary people in back through history. They always had some big stick men back there. Guys that deliver the blow. Ricky Dixon and Scott Case and... They've always had some headhunters back there. Second and ten, Pittsburgh. With 103 to play in the half. 28 to 3, Oklahoma. Draw play inside. Loose ball, and Oklahoma's got it again. Tippins comes up with it. Well, we said you don't want an interception. You don't want a fumble either. Because this is the kind of thing now where it's really demoralizing. You allow them to, with 58 seconds on the clock, you allow Oklahoma to go back in and get a score. You're pretty much out of the ball game there. And here it is uh, from the low end zone. See who pops it out. Dillard attempted the tackle. It looks like he was the guy that uh, punched it out. And it's Stacy Dillard. Exactly right. Dillard, the nose tackle, made the hit that forced the ball loose. And it's first and 10. Oklahoma just inside the Pittsburgh 15. McKinley, the fullback. No gain on that one. Boy, Sean Gilbert with a nice play there, number 91 for Pittsburgh defensively. Came in and just uh, punished the play. Almost took the hand off. Clock winding down, under a minute. And the Sooners run it up in a hurry. 
Actually, second down and a long 10. He may have lost a half yard. This time he doesn't. All the way to the seven goes McKinley, the fullback. And now we're under a half minute. Clock stop 26 seconds as Oklahoma takes a timeout. If they get it in the end zone again to make it 35 to 3 at intermission, Paul Hackett's going to have to do some talking at halftime to get his Panthers back in the football game. Oklahoma, the Big Eight, controlling things. 26 seconds to go first half here in Norman. It has been all Oklahoma in their home opener. 28 to 3 over the visiting Pitt Panthers. And Oklahoma knocking on an opportunity again inside the 10 for the Sooners and uh, not much there on third down and about three. Mc McKinley didn't get much. Hit by Sean Gilbert again. Gilbert's apparently decided down here now he's going to make a stand. He says hey, this is where the defense has got to make a stand and he's making a personal statement out there now. They've got to be awfully frustrated by what's going on. Sean Gilbert was so highly recruited out of high school. He was everybody's All-American and uh, had to sit out a year and now he's really come back strong for him. So it's going to be a fourth down situation for Oklahoma. Don't forget tomorrow doubleheader on CBS it fell today. Story on Dan Hampton and uh, they discussed whether or not he should continue playing and I talked to Dan a couple of times in the last couple of weeks and uh, he said, you know, it's the kind of thing where he knows when he's not going to be able to go anymore. And he didn't feel anybody should uh, tell him when he should leave the game. And he didn't appreciate the remarks that were made uh, last week by a, a broadcaster on another network. <laughs> well, ten knee operations for Hampton. And uh, it's not what he once was, but he's still quite a ball player. 25-yard field goal attempt. And it's good. Artie Lasher knocks it through and tacks three more on for the Sooners. They're out in front, 31 to three. Pittsburgh came in with high hopes, and uh, they were loose at practice yesterday. Dan, they really seemed like they were ready to play Oklahoma. And I don't know if that first opening pass, Collins to Otis Taylor, kind of set the scene of what was to go on here today through the first two quarters, or what? But I think uh, that and this atmosphere here. I mean, when they when these kids uh, walked in yesterday, and the Pitt guys walked in. They were looking around and said, boy, this place is big. You know, this is Oklahoma. This is football. This is college football. They know about the history here. They know about all the great players they've had. And there's no question when you come into Norman, Oklahoma, you're here for one thing, and that's a that's a big football game. And one of the things they noticed right away is that the fans come right up yeah. uh, right behind to the, back the benches. Of the bench. <laughs> <laughs> Fred Von Avian, the defensive coordinator, told him, he says, I promise you, though, none of them will dress. Well, if the score <laughs> continues the way that it is, we might get a couple of them out on the field. Now the Sooners have been backed by their 75,000 fans. Some Pittsburgh folks in here, as we saw coming into town yesterday with the uh, golden blue. But they haven't had much to cheer about so far today. It's been all crimson and cream of the Oklahoma Sooners. 16 seconds to go. Rodallo kick it away. Is that kind of like strawberries and cream at Wimbledon? I think that's it. <laughs> DeVoe and Turner deep, and they're going to keep it on the ground with a squib, try to avoid any kind of long return. Finally, DeVoe picks up at the 9. Doesn't even get to the 20. Well, he just did get to the 20-yard line. Tony Levy down there on the special team. He was a brilliant special team player a week ago as he recovered a couple of UCLA fumbles on punt returns. So Tony's involved again today. They spent a lot of time on special teams at practice of Brad. Uh, I think it was Thursday when we were out here. They spent about an hour uh, on special teams, it seemed, uh, at practice. And uh, everybody gets involved in it as well. Not just the punt and kickoff teams, but a lot of time on onside kicks, recovering onside kicks. As you saw the big edge total offense for the Panthers. Hit from its own 21. A couple of plays, maybe, and that's about it. They keep it on the ground of the pullback. Derek Lewis broke a tackle or two and got 10 or 11 yards and a first down, and clock stopped with three seconds to go. They caught Oklahoma in there, get to the locker room defense. <laughs> One more play to go. Get in there and cool off defense. <laughs> that's it. Get the ice bucket. Paul Hackett, interesting guy to talk to. Of course, uh, Spent time in the professional ranks, learned the passing game under Bill Walsh, the running game under John Robinson. Those are not two bad mentors, I guess, in those respective areas. But today, not a lot has gone well. This, uh, If this holds up, it'll be the first 
Loss as a head coach for him. Won the John Hancock Bowl last year when he was officially named coach right before that game. Off to a 2-0 start this year. And his only other head coaching experience was at Cal Davis as uh, the JV coach. And he had two undefeated years there. Knows his offensive football. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, but they've got some tough games, too. Uh, you, you think about this game, the Oklahoma game. And next week, it's Derek Hughes. And they've got West Virginia. Notre Dame on the schedule, Miami, and they finish up with Penn State, so it doesn't get any easier uh, for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Let's go down to the pit bench right now with Mike Joy. Where the defense uh, is pretty well overheated and frustrated. That all leads to tiredness. Several players, including McDonald, were on, on oxygen. And on that last defensive series, they had three starters, Hamilton, Gobb, and McDonald, luxuriating on the bench. They did go in to try to, to hold off the score and to hold Oklahoma for a field goal, but they're tired from the heat and they're frustrated. All right, Mike, you keep your fluids going down there, too, on the sideline, will you? Kind of warm in that blazer, eh, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> One play left before halftime. And again, it's the fullback. And another big hole. This will help the statistics for Derek Lewis. But Oklahoma in that prevent to end the half. And it has been Oklahoma's half. The end of the first half of play. The score, Oklahoma 31, Pittsburgh 3. Our coverage will continue after this message and a word from your local station. UCLA. An SEC matchup in Jackson, Auburn. 31 to 3. Kenyon Rashid with a couple of touchdowns. Oklahoma opened things up with a 71 yard scoring pass. That's right, I said pass. And they just picked it up and put them down against the Pitt Panthers, who have got a long way to come back here now in the second half. Pittsburgh is a team capable of doing it. But last year against West Virginia, they were down. To the Mountaineers, 31 to 9, and came back and tied that game. But Oklahoma has been so stingy defensively today. You wonder if Pittsburgh can do it. Well, look at the numbers for Oklahoma in rushing yards: 252 yards in the first half. And one of the reasons why is Kenyon Rashid. Watch that block right in the middle by 320-pound uh, Terrence Manning, who just uh, allowed Rashid to get into the end zone. Now that was the second time that Manning had to punish that pit defensive line up in the middle on that series. Panthers not helping themselves with the turnovers either. Time of possession in the football game so far. One of the reasons why this is so close is because Oklahoma has scored so quickly on several different occasions. Their first score was nine seconds. Their third score was 12 seconds. So that accounts for the time of possession being so even. Oklahoma to receive the second half kick, but we're going to have to do this one again as that one goes out of bounds far side of the field. So we'll start all over. Scott Kaplan will tee it up to kick it away again. We welcome you back to Norman, wherever you may be watching on our first college football weekend here on CBS. Don't forget Notre Dame, Michigan tonight. Oklahoma and Pittsburgh in this one. What's Pitt going to do to get back in this game? Well, I think they have to work in between the zones, as we were saying, just before the end of the half. And I think that what they've got to do, though, is go to a control passing game and try to hope and hope that the, their receivers spring loose after they get through that zone. But what Oklahoma's going to do now is they're going to clamp down defensively. Their secondary is going to come up and get in the faces of those Pitt receivers. And what I said earlier about Alex Van Pelt last year against West Virginia had a horrible first half, came back, led the Panthers on one of their greatest comebacks in the history of uh, their football program to eke out a 31-31 tie with West Virginia. So they're going to have to hope for more of the same here today in Norman. But as I mentioned, I think this Sooner defense is probably a little bit tougher than what West Virginia had to offer a year ago. Try it again. As Scott Kaplan will kick it away again. From the 11th is Otis Taylor. Taylor outside. All the way to the 47, a 41-yard return. Lewis Riddick got it down on the far side of the field. Luckily for Pitt that uh, Lewis Riddick was back there. One of their safeties uh, made the tackle. He's a fine uh, open field tackler. Otis Taylor's had a great day today. So it's the uh, first, uh, first play for Oklahoma offensively. He catches the football and runs about 70 yards or so for a touchdown. Took about nine seconds now. Coming back on special teams. Oklahoma offensively at the Pittsburgh 46 yard line. And this one's going to go for a loss. That's one of the first times today we could say that, I guess. As Keith Hamilton got in there, stopped Noel Brewer for a loss. 
we were talking earlier, Brad, it's got to be very frustrating for the Pitt defense. You know, they've been on the field a lot, and they haven't had a lot of success in stopping Oklahoma's option eye, and they got surprised by the passing game of Oklahoma. One of the things you would expect out of their defensive front, though, is to start penetrating a little bit more. They're more effective when they come off and penetrate against this Oklahoma offense. So a loss on the play of six, second down of 16. Is an option I would tailor in motion. Is a toss to Brewer. Look out, do well, Brewer. All the way, touchdown, Oklahoma. It is 37 to 3. What did we tell you about that time of possession not mattering, right? <laughs> time in the 40, it seems the only thing that matters for Oklahoma <laughs> right now. R.D. Lasher with a point after. Line drive, but he got it through. Less than a minute into the third quarter. And Oklahoma with another touchdown. Fred, what you have to hope for in this option eye if you're in defense is that when you force the issue at the line of scrimmage, your secondary rotates up and comes back up to make the stop somewhere near the line of scrimmage. Now, Gobb is the linebacker, missed the, the uh, tackle there. You see Riddick by chasing the play. He's the safety, the strong safety, and you want him up on that line of scrimmage, punishing that back because somebody's got to force the issue and somebody else has to come up and make the stop. And it's just not happening for that pit defense. Duell Brewer forced the issue right into the secondary. 51 yards later, touchdown, Oklahoma. I see Keith Jackson, uh, tight end for the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, a uh, former Oklahoma Sooners, entered our, our booth up here, and he's got a big smile on his face, and he's got full Oklahoma football regalia. <laughs> <laughs> he's crimson and cream up here, that's for sure. 38-3. 55 seconds into the quarter. I know Keith wishes he was back with the Philadelphia Eagles. He's still holding out, but uh, I'm sure he's very hopeful that the situation will work out to his advantage. So a little, a few greenbacks would hurt. <laughs> <laughs> One of the uh, lone remaining holdouts in the NFL. Let's get out of the sideline on the Oklahoma side with Mike Joy. Mike? Coach Paul Hackett's speech to his uh, pet team during the half was all about execution of fundamentals. They're throwing the ball, the ball is getting there, it's not being caught. They've thrown a couple away, and it's just a matter of playing good, fundamental, executional football. When you get tired, when you get frustrated, you can't do that. And that's where he feels Pitt is making the mistakes. It's not in technique, it's in fundamentals. Pittsburgh, Ricky Turner from the four-yard line. Won't get back to the 20. Tony Levy down there again, along with Jason Belser. Only a 13-yard return for Ricky Turner. Talking about fundamentals of football, you know, that's when you get challenged. Uh, when you're challenged physically, uh, when things get tough out there. That's when you find out uh, players are mature enough to, to adjust to those kinds of things and then come back and settle in and play football. Uh, and sometimes if you're running with a, a young group like they are, uh, like Pitt is, then you, you have problems. Among those 13 misfires on the 5 of 18 day for Van Pelleman, several drops, like Joy just talked about on the sideline. Almost picked off. Intended for Truett. Darnell Walker, we told you he was a good cover man, and he showed it there. What a play by Darnell Walker. Now, when you talk to the... Uh defensive coaches at Oklahoma they tell you that this kid is something special they got him out of junior college Coffeeville junior college now watch him at the top of your screen watch this effort here not only is he closing the ball but great leaping ability too he's got to have an awfully good vertical jump he has three years of eligibility left too here at Oklahoma which is good news for uh, the Sooners Bobby Proctor the secondary coach here at OU says that uh, he thinks Darnell is the best cover man that uh, Oklahoma's had since Ricky Dixon. Ricky Dixon's name comes up again. We know that the All-American career and the great pro career he's got going. That belt deep ball. Got hurt out there. Finally, Pittsburgh holds on to one at the 40-yard line. Terry Ray back there, but Matt Pell hooks up a 43-yard gain to Hosea Hurd. Sometimes when you go inside the locker room uh, at halftime and you get ripped, it makes you concentrate a little bit more on the football. Hurd is right in the middle of your screen, number 85, runs a go route, and he is open. 
he simply outruns the coverage. And what happens is when you run up in the middle of that field, you had some safeties covering you, and that time it was Terry Ray for Oklahoma, and Hurd outran it. Paul Hackett very pleased with the play of Hosea Hurd so far this year. He sat out the last six games of last year for disciplinary reasons, disciplined by former coach Mike Godfrey. He told us, he said, expect big things. This, this guy's going to make some contributions to this football team. Showed his 4-4 speed and getting out there and picking up that 43 yards. Van Pelt goes to Truett this time. A little bit too far out in front of him. Truett got his hands on it, but doesn't hold on. See, if you're a quarterback, you're getting that kind of time. Your offensive line is giving you some protection. Uh, you look downfield, and you want your receivers to get open. If you're being uh, covered man-to-man -man or if you're running through a zone, you've got to find those, those holes and settle down in them. And that's your responsibility as a receiver because everybody else is doing their job, and you've got to do your part as well. Just a minute and 40 seconds into the third quarter here in Norman. Brad Nessler, Dan Jiggins, Mike Joy along with you. The Sooners, 38, Pittsburgh 3. Alex Van Pelt trying to change it by getting Pittsburgh their first touchdown. Off play action throws, knocked down by Chris Wilson. Boy, has he been an active linebacker today. Dave Moore was the intended receiver. Wilson, who had the interception on Pittsburgh's opening drive, and it really set the tone, it seems, for how this day was going to go. And you mentioned the key word that he is one of the tone setters for Oklahoma. Here's a kid that says that his mom never misses a football game of his. Younger brother, Corey, is a defensive back here, a freshman with the Sooners. Third down and 10, Pittsburgh. At the OU 40. And Pelt steps up and lets it go. Truett can't get there. Just about a yard too far in front of Orlando Truett. Get the home run opportunity, and that time uh, Alex had it and just put a little bit too much air up underneath of it. But that's the thing now. You know, you haven't been throwing those balls the whole game, and all of a sudden now you're trying to go deep. Uh, it's a little bit of an adjustment. Scott Stark, the backup quarterback, into punt. He's their placement punter, if you will. Lewis Riddick up under center, and he'll back away now, you see, about five or six yards. Leaves the option open if Stark chooses to throw out of this formation, but he will kick it. And he kicked it too deep as well, into the end zone. 40-yard kick, and Oklahoma will be at the 20-yard line on offense, and they've had a lot of it today with a 38-3 lead. Down on the sideline, Cale Gundy, the heir apparent at quarterback here for the Sooners, and he would give him a different look, Dan. Yeah, he's a passing quarterback, uh, certainly coming out of high school, an All-American, passed for 7,000 yards, over 7,000 in high school, and uh, look to the future of Oklahoma football. He's a young man that's going to be throwing the football a great deal and uh, kind of getting out of that running routine and maybe putting the ball in the air more. Not today, though. 289 yards on the ground. The one completion was good for the 71 passing yards and a touchdown. And they keep it on the ground here. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Ike Lewis, who's had a 100-yard-plus day already. You don't have to throw a lot when uh, the ground game's working as it has today. Those Pittsburgh fans would be a lot cooler down there if they had more points, wouldn't they? Oh, yeah, or if they were in one of those fans. <laughs> Nelson Walker. Yeah. yeah. Had a knee last week and uh, be out for a couple of weeks, if not more. They've had some problems uh, with the linebacking situation in the Pittsburgh defense. Nelson's out. Sean Abnett. Mike Boykin. Here's the end around Otis Taylor, and boy, did he get leveled. Kind of a look what I found tackle out there by Ricardo McDonald of Pittsburgh, but Otis will feel that one for a while. Yeah, that's a highlight stick. When you come back, if you stay at home on the reverse, you end up uh, kissing the uh, runner when he comes back around. Now watch Ricardo McDonald come back into your screen from the right side. So I'm come up field, and then he just stayed right at home, mm. didn't go away, and he did a WWF move on him with the full <laughs> body slam. Loss of three. Ricardo, a junior out of Patterson, New Jersey. 6'2", 230, and he got all 230 into that one. And the option eye of third down and long. Lewis. We understand we are experiencing some video difficulties. We're working on them to get them fixed as soon as possible, and until we do, a little radio.
radio play-by-play -play here. Huh? Oklahoma and Pittsburgh with 11-15 to go third quarter. Sooners with a 38-3 lead. High snap from center. Riddell got the kick away. Kessler's going to feel it on one hop at the 40. He got up to the 42-yard line, so only a two-yard return after a 40-yard punt. And the Pitt Panthers are going to have pretty decent field position with which to work when we come back. 11.03 to go in the third. Sooners 38, Panthers 3. Norman. And let's go down to the sideline and Mike Joy. Mike. The score down here is 102, Brad. Uh, that's the temperature. There is a nice gentle breeze west to east. And the one saving grace in all this is I found one fellow who's dressed more warmly than I am. And though he has little to cheer about, he's the Pitt Panther. It looks awful warm in that suit. No time. Stay cool, buddy. First down for Alex Van Pelt in the flat to Richard. Kerman got it to about the 43 yard line. I understand we've got all our video problems squared away. We welcome you to Norman. And it hasn't been a happy day for the Pitt Panther or Kerman Richards for that matter, although he had a big first quarter. He's uh, not been the biggest part of the offense due to the fact Pitt's so far behind. Coming out to the half, he had 88 yards in the first half, and normally when he goes over 100, Pittsburgh wins the football game. I think it's 10-3-1 and one, uh, is their record when he goes over 100 yards, but today he may do that, but Pitt's in trouble. Alex Van Pelt is 7 out of 24 throwing the football. Set to put it up for the 25th time. Deep ball for Truitt. Intercepted. Belser with some room to midfield and down to the pit 48 yard line. Jason Bells, who's been all over the field today, an interception and a 43-yard return. Yeah, the way uh, Alex Van Pelt hung this one up there, I thought Jason Bells was going to run over and signal a fair catch, though, because the ball was up so high in the air. He had so much of an opportunity, and uh, Terry Ray also helped on the play by pushing the receiver out of the way and clearing it out for Jason Bells, and he's had a great football game so far, though. Has it in pit territory for the OU offense. The Pittsburgh 47. Nowhere is Duell Brewer. Nice hit again by Ricardo McDonald, the outside linebacker. You know, Brad, last week uh, in the UCLA game, Jason uh, was the uh, nominated as the uh, Big Eight Player of the Week by the Oklahoma staff, and I'm sure he's going to get that same kind of uh, recognition this week as well. That's right. Big turnovers in this ball game. Auburn got a scare. Here comes BYU, trailing by a touchdown now as Washington State jumped out to the big lead. Ty Detmer's got that offense off the air now, up in the air. And flying high. Ooh, Golden Bears trying to make it 0-2 for Miami. That'd be something. Brewer. Uh-oh. Big hole inside the 30. This will be an Oklahoma touchdown. OU putting up the rushing offense. Hardy Lasher for the point after. Right through the middle. Talk about running that option eye, the new offense of Oklahoma. Here it is. This is just the way you draw it up when you're in the meeting room. Let the quarterback get in, take the pressure right there, pitch it out. Brewer, nice little cutback, simply outruns the secondary of Pittsburgh. Power running as well as speed. Like we said, the only thing that matters now is 40 times for Oklahoma. 37 to go third, but a long way to come back for Pittsburgh. Oklahoma was favored in this game, but not by 42 points. 9.37 to go third quarter. Duell Brewer, as you see him right through there, has two runs today for touchdowns, almost totaling 100 yards just with his two touchdown runs. Artie Lasher to kick. Ricky Turner at the goal line. Into a lot of crimson jerseys at the 23-yard line. Let's get a baseball update now, and let's take you to New York. 
Brad, you just saw the score, and here's how BYU is coming back in the third quarter. Ty Detmer with a 16-yard touchdown pass to Brent Nyberg. Detmer has passed for 340 yards. In the American League, Toronto beats Baltimore with a three-run homer by Kelly Gruber in the ninth. They now trail Boston by two and a half games in the AL East. Now back to Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggins. All right, Andrea, 45 to three with nine and a half minutes to go third quarter here in Norman. And we've got an injured Pitt Panther on the Owen Field turf. I believe it's Mark Shemansky. It is. And the Pitt sideline pretty much tells the story of how this one's gone. It all started with a Pittsburgh drive that went on their opening possession deep into Oklahoma territory. Then Chris Wilson picked off a pass. One play later, 71 yards. Collins to Otis Taylor. And it's been a big crimson-colored snowball ever since. Get Sherman Richards. Ooh, he took a shot at the 26. Bill Bowden, I think, is the man that got the helmet on it. Let's take you back to the last touchdown. One of the things that happens sometimes, you get the wide receivers to block. In this case, Corey Warren. Watch number two come in right there, and right in the middle of your screen, you see the key block right here. That's Corey Warren, who up until a couple of days ago was really considered a defensive back. Now he's a true freshman and uh, got the opportunity to play today. And boy, did he make a uh, clean, clear block. Those are the kinds of things that will help coaches say, yeah, we made the right decision moving him from defensive back to uh, wide receiver. 47 yards later, Duell Brewer, part of a 335-yard rushing day for the Sooners. Duell, touchdown runs of 51 and 47. Jordan Richards again, left side this time. Still going to be a third down situation for Pitt. Third down and three coming up. Tracy Gordon and Joe Bowden in on the hit. Oklahoma has mixed it up pretty well today, Dan Jiggins. Everybody's in the act as far as the ground game's concerned. These are the kind of days that make you feel real good when you go back to practice on Monday. See Ike Lewis at 113 yards, Dewell Brewer with 106, and Kenyon Rashid with 78, but the key there for him, two touchdowns. They want this new pass offense and the Sooners is working pretty well. <laughs> well, they're passing it to the back. <laughs> Third down three for Van Pelt. Got it complete. I don't know if it's enough for the first down. Going to be very close. Glenn Duvaux made the catch and took a shot right about where the first down marker is. They may have to bring the chains on for this one. You know, in talking to Paul Hackett, um, it really seemed like uh, Pittsburgh was flying pretty high when they came in. They felt pretty good. They had an excellent spring and uh, summer camp. Summer, they went to Johnstown, PA, to, to work out, and they felt that uh, they got the kind of work that they needed there, and they were ready for, number one, the heat, and also the competition that they were going to face. Uh, and then to come in and have an unsettling experience like the one they're having today, 45-3, they're down, and they're on the, the bad side of that number. Got the first down by about a half yard. In Johnstown there, they were calling it at the beginning, Camp Hackett. And by the end of it, they were calling it Kenya Hackett. Yeah. It got pretty rough, the players told us. <laughs> he said they promised him it was not going to be any club med. No. Nope. <laughs> Don't bring your golf clubs, fellas. Boy, they could use a bag of clubs today to take a swing at Oklahoma, the way things have gone. 45 to 3 Sooners. Pittsburgh just trying to keep plugging away. And they'll put it in the air here on first down. Curd. Make it. Truett. Truett down to the 35. 32 yard pickup to Orlando Truett. Orlando Truett's finally getting into the groove. It's late in the ball game. Runs a post pattern here. He's going to be up at the top of your screen, number 80 for Pittsburgh. Now you see that soft zone now that uh, Oklahoma's gone back to and is allowing him to come up underneath. And what he did was he tried to settle in between the corners and the safeties and just cut across the field. Charles Franks made the stop, but not before Truett picked up his second catch down near the 36-yard line. First down, Pittsburgh. The delay give to Richards. He's going to lose a yard here. Mike Coates, inside linebacker, made the stop. Mike Coates kept, kept him warm. He came from the other side of the field, and it was like a freight train coming. I mean, you're running back. You have to hear that happening. Let's get out of Mike Joy with an injury update, Mike. Mark Shemansky, the pit linebacker that was helped off, has uh, twisted and sprained his left knee. He's going to sit on the bench for a bit with it iced down, but it's just a sprain. 
Boy, Mike, we were talking earlier about those linebackers for Pitt and how many of them they have out. Now this is their fourth linebacker that they've had hurt so far this season. Second down, and 11. Van Pelt loads it. Now he's going to have to scramble a bit. On the run, he's got a man open. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. It's Dave Moore, the tight end. Finally, Pittsburgh in the Oklahoma end zone, a 37-yard scoring toss. So all the receivers, they, they saw Van Pelt scrambling around. Some of them tried to work open, working uh, laterally, and uh, Seaman just went to the end zone, or more, excuse me. They feel that uh, Dave Moore is the best route runner of those three tight ends. Took until there were 6.21 to go in the third quarter for Pittsburgh to finally score a touchdown. Scott Kaplan in for the extra point. Right down the middle. Six minutes and 21 seconds to go here in Norman. 45-10 Sooners. Now let's get an update on that BYU game. We go to New York. Brad, BYU doing what it does best in the wacky whack. Detmer, a 32-yard touchdown pass to Andy Boyce. BYU comes back from a 22-point halftime deficit to tie the game. They're now in the fourth quarter. Let's go back to Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggis. Thanks, Andrea. Back in Norman in the third quarter. It is 45-10 Oklahoma. Finally, though, the Pitt Panthers able to get in the end zone as Alex Van Pelt just went 37 yards to Dave Moore, his tight end, for the score. Off the scramble, too, Alex Van Pelt couldn't find anything early on. He'll still pull out to his right side. Now, Moore 83 is coming from the left-hand side of your screen, recognizes the scramble situation, and heads to the end zone. He continues to run to the corner of the end zone, giving Van Pelt an opportunity to get it down in there. As you can see, there was nobody covering him when he got down to that corner. 77-yard drive in six plays. Took uh, the Panthers 316 on, to go in for the score, and Alex Van Pelt no, finally on. put a good drive together. He was three for three on that series. Coming into this game, Pitt was very desirous of using their three tight end set, bringing all three of them in. They feel that those are their three best blockers when you talk about the receiver packages. But uh, the situation just has not provided itself for them offensively to, to get to that where you're worried about running the football. They're trying to put points on the board now and get back in this thing. Alabama starts 0-2 after losing to Florida today. Alessandro to kick off. Otis Taylor from the three. And Otis got out to about the 28-yard line. I have to wonder pretty soon if Oklahoma will switch quarterbacks. Maybe go to Cal Gundy, uh, Cal Gundy. The Notre Dame squad, the youngsters take it over for Tony Rice. Can he beat fourth-ranked Michigan? We'll find out tonight. That's the second of our doubleheader. Boy, we picked that one. Dan, here comes Gundy. It pays to keep an eye on the sideline. <laughs> the freshman out of Midwest City, Oklahoma. There's his numbers from last week against the Bruins of UCLA. Let's watch the freshman go to work. Now he's one for one. About a nine-yard pickup as he got it over to Corey Warren, another freshman. Those two might be uh, a battery for years to come here in Norman. Gives you a nice one-two punch. You know, it's interesting, a Kale Gundy, doesn't that sound like a, a, a gunfighter or something? I mean, it's perfect That's for right. you know, the passing kind of quarterback that he is. He's got a nice touch. We were watching him the other day at practice. He's, you know, very deft when he handles the football. It's going to be interesting to see uh, all the different options that Oklahoma has now offensively. Well, he certainly comes in here in a good spot. Like a relief pitcher having a big lead. First down, Oklahoma. McKinley, the fullback, takes him straight up the middle of the 40-yard line. Well, what this does for Oklahoma, though, this is a real morale booster for them, uh, you know, having not been on television last year, now their first two games being on national TV. It starts into the, the how you rebuild the program, and certainly that's something that concerns Gary Gibbs. When we talked to him the other day, when we talked about uh, the probation and everything else that they've gone through, he said it, quite frankly, it was an embarrassment to the coaches, to the players, and people associated with the program, and they want to reestablish the good tradition of football here at OU. Oh, that one almost picked off as the freshman may have had his wires crossed with his wide receiver a little bit on that far side. A nice 
spin move before he let go of the football. Sometimes when you draw him up in the sand, you know, the guy doesn't see everything you tell him. <laughs> you know, you go down here about 10 yards and then you run here. <laughs> Gundy with a smile on his face. Yeah, he's just, he's just a quick hit, you know, a little fake spin out there and then uh, toss the ball and it's way behind the receiver, uh, Guess. Already Guess. And Corey Warren, the wide outs on second and 10. Gundy with the option and a low pitch. Handled pretty well. Lewis is swarmed under, but at least he took it after a one hop. Yeah, on that option, if I'm Lewis, I'm asking, do I have the option not to reach down there and pick it up and get my, my head handed to me by Keith Hamilton? Hamilton, 6'7", about 278, a sophomore of Lynchburg, Virginia. Father passed away this uh, past off season, and he went through some very difficult and trying personal uh, uh, problems with that and then adjusting to the changes that happened in terms of the coaching staff at Pitt has really come out of it in strong shape, though. Third down along 12 for OU. Hey, the fullback, the fullback, the fullback! Pullback McKinley! Rambles down to the 37-yard line. If you're sitting at home, you probably heard that Pittsburgh sideline screaming, watch out for the fullback, and here comes the fullback, Mike McKinley, number 31, blasting through. Now, what happened was Hamilton forced the issue up front. Then you got to expect your linebackers, and I think that was uh, uh, Ricardo that they were expecting to come in and try to make the stop on that, but it just did not work out. At the 37 of Pittsburgh, Oklahoma with a big lead, 45 to 10. Everything going their way with 4.14 to go third quarter. Gundy has to throw on first down. Dangerous pass, almost picked off by John Baker, one of the defensive linemen for Pittsburgh. Well, you can tell John was a defensive lineman, too. He just beat that ball up when it hit him in the hands. <laughs> Those big old defensive linemen. They have a tough time holding on to the football. See, uh, Fred Von Apen, the defensive coordinator for Pitt, is working in some of his other people. And John Baker's in there, 6'7", 255-pound junior out of San Rafael, California. They don't lack for size on that Pitt defensive front, but the Oklahoma offensive line has done a marvelous job to this point today. Kenley. Maybe got a yard. That's about all. I want to show you something on that one, though. That was very interesting. Sean Gilbert, you saw him before the ball was snapped, make his slant down in there, and then the ball wasn't. He pulled back out. But what he did was he beat up everybody on the play and then makes the stop. Watch him from the end zone. He's over on the right side of your screen. You saw him move right there. Now watch him step down in. Jam the tackle is trying to down block. Jam the guard. Throw him off. That's Medice. And then make the stop. That's playing defensive line. Defensive player of the year as a high school senior at 88. As uh, Dan mentioned, sat out last year due to the academic problems. But he is quite a specimen down here at 300 pounds. Third down and long. That one stuffed at the line. Curtis Bray, I think, got a hand on that one. So young Cale Gundy doesn't have the greatest of uh, results on uh, this offensive possession for the Sooners. 3.16 to go in the quarter, and Oklahoma's going to have to give it up. Brad Riddell into punt again. He's done a nice job today. For, for the few times that he's had to punt. That's right. <laughs> Doug Hetzler, the senior, back for Pittsburgh near his own 10. Going to knock this one in the end zone as well. And Pittsburgh will have it at their own 20-yard line on offense. It's now time to present this week's Toyota Leadership Award to the team players who have been singled out by their school's coaching and faculty staff for outstanding performance in the areas of team contributions, academics, and citizenship. Today's game team leadership winners, Eric Holsworth from Pittsburgh and Scott Evans from the University of Oklahoma. Toyota will donate a check in the amount of $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Our congratulations to those two young men. I know Scott was a two-time all-academic Big 8. Pretty good football player as well. Starts at defensive line for Oklahoma. Two-time defensive player, uh, uh, all-Big 8 as far as football is concerned, too. So he's getting it done both ways. Big hole for DeVoe. He's got about 14 yards out to the 34-yard line. 
Glenn DeVoe, who played quite a bit last week against Boston College due to some injury problems to some other people. He had 69 yards and a couple of touchdowns last week. Got to run, yeah, got to run a little fullback. Moved over to fullback and did pretty well. Pitt's going to go without a huddle. They've got to use as little time as possible to get the best results they can. And help. Got Truett out there, and he's got the catch. Down near the 40 of Oklahoma. Darnell Walker was covering. 25-yard pass play. Man felt to Orlando Truett. Orlando's holding on to him now. In the first half, he had trouble in that area. And I figured maybe we'll see a little bit more of uh, Darnell Dickerson for uh, Pitt at the quarterback position. This is an excellent opportunity to play him. You're down by 35 points going into the uh, fourth quarter and only about two minutes left in the third. You can pull all the plugs and experiment all you sure. want. Sure. It's a chance to get some people in the game and rotate them around. Alex Van Pelt. There's Darnell Dickerson, who was the starting quarterback before. Draw play. Didn't get much. About two yards to the 39. Tracy Gordon made the stop for Oklahoma. You know, one thing that both of these coaches, these head coaches, seem to be concerned about, and that is getting uh, all their people involved in the football games and making them feel a part of the program. And it is so important to look down that bench every now and then and make sure that everybody's got a little sweat worked up. On second down, Ben Pelt goes back across the middle, in and out of the hands of Truett, his intended receiver. Terry Ray out there. Almost got his hands on that one. Difficult one for Truett. He was running to his uh, to his left, and the ball is thrown behind him, and he's airborne at the same time. So it's a little tough to catch that that football when you're in that position. You were down in El Paso to watch him uh, work his magic as a freshman oh, in the John boy. Hancock Bowl. Last it was year. a real treat, Brad. Uh, we really felt that he was going to be something special at that time, and certainly hasn't disappointed. He had two good football games earlier this season. Just had an off uh, first half. And so did Alex Van Belt, who's warmed it up a bit. 11 out of 30 for over 200 yards in the air now. Richards lost the ball, and Oklahoma's going to cover it. Tracy Gordon's got this one. You know Swerve and Curvin wants to put a couple of moves on, but when you're going through traffic, you've got to wrap that football up. Uh, it doesn't make any difference if you make as many moves as MC Hammer. If you don't have the football in your hand, nobody cares. One of the things that Oklahoma's done exceptionally well today is go after the football, and if you're not holding it real tight and wrapping it up when you're going down, they're going to pull it out, and that's exactly what they did on that play. Oklahoma offensively. At its own 34-yard line after the fumble recovery by that linebacker, Tracy Gordon. 45-10. And Pitt killing themselves with the turnovers. Rashid, the first man through out to the 38-yard line. Pickup of about four. It'll be second and six. Let's take it down to the sideline and Mike Joy. Mike. Brad, before the advent of electronic scoreboards like the huge one here at Oklahoma, they used to paint the numbers on wood and literally hang them off the board. 50 points is the big number in college football, hence the team hang 50. That's what they're talking about on the Oklahoma bench now. They want to hang 50 points on the board today and give the nation something to think about. Well, but, they did that a lot of times over the so, years, too, didn't hey, they? Hey, Mike, the way they used to score points here, I'm sure that that guy had to be a fast painter. <laughs> <laughs> Second down. On the option, got the... Goes down, maybe lost a half yard. Prentice Wright inside came up to make the stop. Gundy is not an option quarterback. As we've said, he's more of the uh, drop back variety with his great high school statistics. We mentioned earlier, Pittsburgh has been turning the football over. And look at the results, too. This is the thing that really does you in. Uh, interception led to a touchdown fumble, led to a touchdown fumble, field goal. Interception another, led to another touchdown. And, We'll find out what happens on this fumble. You know, they, inter they intercepted four UCLA passes, and Tony Lever recovered a couple of fumbles last week, so they are really making the big play with defense. Ernest Williams, he lost the ball. Let's see who's got this one. I think Pitts covered it near the 48-yard line. I think I'm 0 for 1 on guessing who recovered the fumble today, though. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm 0 for 2. <laughs> well, Pittsburgh had the most bodies around it, but they didn't cover it. Uh, there was a mad scramble down there. It stripped out there by uh, Prentice Wright. 
couple of people have an opportunity to, to grab a hold of it. It looks like they've recovered it, but uh, someone from Oklahoma is very alert down there and grabs it. There's Lewis Riddick who caused the fumble. A lot of people are saying he may be one of the best safeties uh, in the country coming out this year. He is, uh, by, according to NFL draft report, say he's the best in the USA. Rashid wants his 100 yards rushing today, too, and Kenyon's on his way. You know, just to go back to Lewis Riddick, I was reading an article in uh, Pitt Magazine where he was discussing, uh, you know, the trials and tribulations of going to uh, to college and trying to, you know, make a go of it when you're on scholarship and you can't get a job to make a couple extra bucks and how difficult it is. He's an economics major and wants to become an investment banker when he gets out of, out of school. He's, he'll graduate this spring. Just seems like an exceptional young man. He told us uh, the other day that he's down, lost 10 pounds. He's now down to about 210. Well, we played three quarters. It is Oklahoma 45, Pittsburgh 10. Our coverage will continue after this message and a word from your local station. To a 45-10 lead. We've got a quarter to go here in Norman. And Oklahoma with the football, and Kenyon Rashid is going to have his 100 yards, I think, with that carry as he takes pit tacklers down to the 25. And let's find out more about that BYU-Washington State game, and let's go to New York. Well, guys, it's turned into a shootout in Provo. Ty Detmer connects with Stacy Corley, a nine-yard touchdown pass, Detmer's fifth touchdown pass of the day. BYU leads with four minutes left in the game, but Washington State is driving there on the eighth. Zach, let's go back to Norman. All right, it's funny, at halftime, we talked about that BYU game and how it was going, and our special guest is going to join us here in a minute said, well, there goes Detmer's Heisman, and he said, wait a minute, it's only halftime. And Ty's brought him back. He does his Rashid, down near the 10-yard line, and Kenyon joining now, Ike Lewis and Newell Brewer, over 100 yards on the day. 121 yards now for Kenyon Rashid. And Oklahoma down to the 11-yard line. And the guy joining us here in the middle, former two-time All-American for the University of Oklahoma, Keith Jackson. Keith, good to see you. It's good to be here. I know I a lot mean, of people, I'd rather be in Philadelphia. I was going to say, be a lot of people <laughs> like to see you in green and silver, I'm sure. Your Sooners are doing it today. Powerful team. You kind of predicted this, though, when we talked to you the other day. You said this team was kind of special. It, they are special. Uh, special in the fact that they get to play on TV and special in the fact that it's uh, 100 degrees down there on the turf. <laughs> That's why you're up here, too, right? <laughs> That's right? Have they surprised you a little bit today, though, with how things have gone? I think they have. I think that I thought that they had a great team. I knew they were going to be able to run the ball up, I mean, run the score up on the board, but I had no idea it was going to be this type of runaway. The new option I is supposed to be more passing. They haven't needed it today, have they? I, yeah, they, they hadn't needed it, but I'd rather see them throw the ball and get ready for teams like Colorado and Nebraska down the line in case they stuff the run. Hey, I got to ask you, what did you think about the first pass, uh, the first play being a pass thrown for the touchdown? Oh, I loved it. I was like, suit me up, take me out again. <laughs> <laughs> Second down at the six yard line. A little draw play. Did he get in? Right at the goal line is where the pileup occurred. And the fans looking for a touchdown for Ernest Williams, and he didn't quite get there. You have to break the plane of the uh, end zone, and here's a look at it from behind. Now, this offensive line for Oklahoma has been doing a great job all day. Absolutely sensational. Mike McKinley up on the line there that time, coming from the fullback position through a nice block up front. Teran Manning was signaling touchdown already at 325 pounds. I'd buy it from him. <laughs> I said, you got it. <laughs> you want it? <laughs> Before what looks like another OU touchdown, when are we going to see you back in the NFL, Keith? I hope to be back soon. I think we're working on it right now. Uh, as as collectively, as a group, we're not talking right now, but I know that uh, when it comes to the latter part of Philadelphia playing against the good teams, they're going to need me in there. Gundy, touchdown. And with that, as the rest of the fans are excited. So Keith Jackson has got his hands up in the air up here in a touchdown formation. And Keith, thanks for being along with us. Man. Great being here. Keith Jackson, two-time All-American for Oklahoma and All-Pro of the Philadelphia Eagles. And we hope to see him back in the NFL Wars very soon. There's Steve Collins on the sideline. Everybody can be happy for OU today because they have all contributed. And Gundy with the latest touchdown is hung 50. In fact, it's 51 going on 52 with 13.02 to play in the ballgame. And R.D. Lasher in for the point after. 
kick is up and good. And Oklahoma continues to roll with just over 13 minutes to go. There are seats in Provo, Utah. Washington State quarterback Brad Goss and a seven-yard touchdown pass to Calvin Griggs. They did not go for two, so the score is tied. Still 357 left in the game. Now let's go back to Norman. All right, Andrea. 357. That's an eternity for a guy like Ty Detmer, isn't it? Yeah, that's like uh, giving anybody else a whole quarter to operate. Well, a good tight one there. The same doesn't hold true here, that's for sure. Oklahoma, 52 to 10. The most yards ever given up by Pittsburgh on the ground. 433 rushing yards against Paul Hackett's defense today. We talked earlier in the game about the tradition of these two schools and the great football traditions, and certainly uh, you know, the Pitt alumni across the country are going to be disappointed with the effort here, but these young men giving it a good haul. This is beat by a better team right now. Last year, DeVoe a yard deep. DeVoe across the 20 to the 21. Make it Turner, excuse me, Ricky Turner. And Pittsburgh coming back on offense near their own 21-yard line. An injured Pitt Panther on the special teams. And that's Eric Seaman, the tight end on the special teams. He's up and going off under his own power. Is he going to stay in there? Let's go down to Mike Joy on the Pittsburgh sideline. Mike. Pitt starting right outside linebacker Ricardo McDonald has been here on the bench. He's been underneath the cold towel, and now his left calf is tightened up. He came out in that last series, and he's probably gone for the day. One of the things you have to do, Mike, uh, when you come in, you know you're coming into this kind of heat, is you want all your players to get plenty of fluids in three, four, five days in advance, start building up the fluid levels and making sure that everybody has enough potassium in their bodies. Duval out to the... 23, maybe the 24-yard line. On the previous play, Eric Seaman, the tight end on the kickoff return, was shaken up. And as I said, I don't know if he's coming back in or not. And he didn't know where he was as the trainers helped him over to the sideline. The other scores, USC up over Penn State, Colorado and Illinois at halftime. Miami now has bounced back after trailing California to lead by 10. Golden Bears is making them struggle out there in California. Bears, Bears look pretty good in their win over Wisconsin a week ago. Well, I think Harvard might look good in their win over Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> Harvard again? <laughs> Come on. That's going to be a first down or very close to it for DeVoe. Got it out near the 32-yard line. Good enough to move the sticks. Fred, we were talking earlier about how uh, the Oklahoma defense has really contained Pittsburgh, and when we were talking with uh, uh, Charlie Sadler, who was the defensive coordinator of Pittsburgh, he said last year was not a positive year for uh, for uh, Oklahoma defensively, and they really feel that you know the key to their defense is the stand-up people, as they say here, uh, a real strong group, and we've talked about them all game long, and they have played exceptionally well for it. First down, Pitt. At its own 32, DeVoe crashes through across the 40, and he's out near another first down before Reggie Barnes made the stop. Don't forget, coming up tonight on CBS, we have a special sneak preview for you, Family Man and the Hogan family, and then college football, number four against number one. Jim Nance and Tim Brandt bring you all the action, along with John Dockery, Notre Dame, and Michigan tonight in the second of our doubleheader. Those of you on the West Coast will see the football game first and then our sneak preview to follow. That's coming up tonight on CBS. Second and short for Van Pelt. Had a man open over the middle, his tight end Sykes, and couldn't quite get it to him. Lionel Sykes should have continued to run full speed on the route. He slowed down, unsure whether or not uh, Van Pelt saw him, but he should have just kept going across the field because you will run into those uh, holes in the zone if you continue to go. Just nestle down in there between the... Uh, linebackers and the deep people. Van Pelt, who has soaked up so much offensive information from the mind of head coach Paul Hackett, and he says he's a perfect pupil for him because he loves it, and he studies it, and he puts it to use. And today he's had a tough go of it, but uh, there'll be better days for Alex Van Pelt, you can bet. First down out to the 45-yard line. Yeah, you really mentioned the thing. That's the key, not to get down on yourself. You have a tough day sometimes. It's going to happen. I mean, if you, as long as you play the game and as long as the games are played, this is going to happen. So you, it's a little bit of a character test as well uh, for Pittsburgh when you're down like this to see 
who performs. Uh, that's one of the things you want to watch when you go back into your film session. Who doesn't give up and continues the effort up front and as well as uh, in the backfield. And it's hard not to give it up when you're trailing 52 to 10 and it's about 105 degrees down there on the turf at Owen Field. And Pelt tried to come back to his safety valve. Sykes and a nice job to break that up. Mike Coates, the linebacker, and he has had a heck of a day. A couple yeah. of big plays on special teams and now backing up Chris Wilson and uh, Joe Bowden inside there and he's had a good ball game. Mike Coates with the blanket protection. <laughs> <laughs> we got our coats off, I'll tell you that much. Poor Mike Joy. <laughs> Coming up for Oklahoma, they've got Tulsa and Kansas and then uh, the big rivalry with Oklahoma State, Texas, that one in Dallas and Iowa State. And they felt like if they could get by Pittsburgh today and look good doing it, that they might be well on their way. And certainly they have been impressive. Second down and long for Van Pelt. Intended for Hosea Hurd. It'll be third down and 10. Rich and them getting back in their way, uh, Oklahoma, that is. And uh, one of the ways that they've been trying to do that and get back into what we were talking about, the tradition of Oklahoma, was they started a Letterman's Association, an uh, alumni association. And Garrett Gibbs was telling us that how it, how it works. Uh, they get their alumni back and they try to help out the young men who are graduating. Uh, they help them in job placement, writing resumes and that type of thing, and helping them get on with their life's work. So it's another part of what Oklahoma is trying to do to correct some things that have happened in the past. They were saying it's not just a, a four or five year commitment when you're in the family, you're in it for life. Deep ball overshoots his intended receiver, Chris Boyer. And Van Pelt's had a few people open out there, but the day is taking its toll, I think, a little bit on the Pittsburgh quarterback. With 10.38 remaining in the ball game, the Panthers will have to give it up again. And there's the student and the teacher. And there's a familiar sight. Brian Greenfield, the Pitt Panther. Uh, Pitt Panther punter. <laughs> <laughs> Say that three times. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen at some point today. <laughs> If he hadn't had to punt so many times, I wouldn't have had that problem. <laughs> A lot of leg into this one. Otis Taylor's going to let it go and into the end zone again. So Oklahoma on offense from their 20 when we come back, and they've got things well in hand. Out there before it's done. We've got 62 here, but most of them belong to Oklahoma. Yeah, and that game, I think, is a question of he who ends up with the ball last wins. Kind of looks like it, doesn't it? You can see that heat coming up off that AstroTurf. Uh, AstroTurf has been down on this field. It's called SuperTurf. It's been down there for 10 years. And Oklahoma, believe it or not, is thinking about putting it in natural turf. Freshman Williams, two or three. Don't forget the NFL coming up tomorrow on CBS. We got some great games, Chicago and Green Bay. And how many times have they gotten together? About 115 about 100, 14, or 115. Yeah. Phoenix and Philadelphia, the Rams and Tampa Bay, Atlanta and Detroit, a battle of shootout, uh, run and shoot teams, I should say. And many of you will see Washington and San Francisco in our second game. The Giants and Dallas, the Saints and the Vikings, both 0 and 1. And the NFL today, Greg Gumbel, Terry Bradshaw, Leslie Visser, and Pat O'Brien get it all going for you at 12.30 Eastern time tomorrow. You want to check the local listing for the game of time in your area. Oklahoma content as they have been all day to keep it on the ground, but now they just use, would like to use up the remaining 9 minutes and 40 seconds, not so concerned about adding to the lead. Brad, you know, it's interesting. I, I understand that one of the stories on the NFL today, uh, tomorrow, is going to be Pat O'Brien on the Bears seeking an indoor practice facility. And uh, what happened was Mike McCaskey uh, made a public appeal for someone to build him an indoor practice facility. He went on the television and asked for uh, the funds to do it. And I thought that that was a video that should be sent to one of these practical joke sh uh, shows or <laughs> funniest video shows. <laughs> well, we look forward to that tomorrow. Oklahoma with a third down and long here at their own 24-yard line. They're not going to get the first down as Williams got it across the 25 to about the 26-yard line. Let's take it back down to Mike Joy on the sideline for an injury update. Mike? Pitt's a tight end, Eric Seaman, uh, came off the heat suffering from dehydration. They got his helmet, got the pads off, and got him iced down, but uh, he wasn't responding well, so they put him on the cart and hauled him off to the locker room. He's, he'll be okay, but in this 100-degree heat, uh, you can't blame him. It's, not, it's a tough way to go out, but it's not a bad way. It's so warm down here. Brother. 
Oklahoma to punt. Something they haven't had to do a lot of today. Kessler is going to run this one back. Nice move inside. Still out of speed. And down near the 43-yard line of Oklahoma. Artie Guest made the stop on the special teams after a 24-yard punt return. Oklahoma. Back in Norman with 8.02 to go in the ball game. Oklahoma by 42. Pittsburgh has it offensively, and they have a player down. Can't uh, quite see who it is. I believe it's DeVoe, the running back, who went down after that carry. And we will check on his injury when we come back right after this. To go in Oklahoma by 42. Spinning down to the 35 yard line, Ricky Turner in there. Going to be short of the first down by about two. Six years ago today, the Sooners beat Pittsburgh 42 to 10. They're 10 points better today, 52 to 10. It's interesting looking over on that uh, Oklahoma sideline. I was looking for the linemen while we were in the uh, commercial break, and they're all over there trying to find a little shade. Linemen are always smart about finding shade. Over the Pittsburgh sideline, it's not quite as exciting. They're not having a whole lot of fun this afternoon. This is Pittsburgh's ninth trip into Oklahoma territory, but they've got only 10 points to show for it today. Scott Stark is in at quarterback for Alex Van Pelt. His first pass is incomplete. Intended down there for Eric Holsworth, his tight end. Let's go down to Mike Joy right now for another update on the sideline, Mike. Pit tailback Glenn DeVoe went down hard on this artificial turf, which kind of has the consistency of pot scrubber material. He took a real bad bruise to the right knee. He'll be okay. It's not the greatest thing to land on, but it'll keep your dishes clean. <laughs> At the 35, fourth down and two. That's what they can do. They can sell it when uh, they take it up to sell it as pot scrubber. Cover a lot of kitchen, wouldn't it? Cutter. To take the long route and got the first down, I think, at the 32, maybe even the 31 yard line. That's going to be good enough for the first down. Stop the clock as Melvin Carter knocked him out of bounds right at the seven minute mark. Brad Nessler, Dan Jiggets, and Mike Joy with you here in Norman, where it's been all Sooners in their home opener for 1990, 52 to 10. Pittsburgh working in some of their second line offensive people. I see Tony DeLazio's in there, and Dave Dixon, uh, Dave Anderson, and Bill Hurst. And those folks from that second group. Number 12 right there, Scott Stark, the number two quarterback for Pittsburgh. Alex Van Pelt finished his day 11 of 35 for 202 yards, one touchdown, and he was intercepted twice. This is Stark. He's in trouble right now. Down he goes. And a penalty marker down. May have been a face mask yeah, inadvertently right. on that play. I, I think you're right, Brad. It uh, looked like he reached down and grabbed a, a whole hunk of metal. Russell Allen got the pressure, and there's a call. On the defense in the previous spot, yes. Russell didn't have to reach too far. He's 6'7, 256, a freshman out of Oklahoma City. Boy, am I glad I'm not playing college just, football. I was just going to say, at, at, the, at practice the last couple of days, I can see you shaking your head. You're one of the biggest guys I know, and some of these guys have dwarfed you. <laughs> Moves it down to the 26 yard line. Ball hacking, tough day. Head coach of. Pittsburgh Panthers. Paul knows how to re-rack it, though, and get things going back in the right direction next week. First and five with the penalty. Near the 24 goes Turner. Got about two on it. Fred, it was interesting talking to, to Paul Hackett. Uh, he's talking about the differences, you know, now that he's a head coach and the, the adjustment he's had to make. He loves working with the quarterbacks and working with the offense, but he's just had a tough time now trying to balance the two. And look at that BYU score. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe that? Gary Kirkpatrick out there in, uh, in Provo had to, had to roll up his sleeves that got so hot out there. Did they ever. We're going to take it out to Curry Kirkpatrick right now after this play. He's with Ty Detmer who helped BYU come back and win that one with 50 points. Let's go to Curry.
50 to 36, Brigham Young over Washington State. Ty Detmer with five touchdown passes, 400,000 yards, whatever. It's like a dream season already. Well, we can't do that every week. You know, we got to come out and play both halves. Uh, Coach Edwards got a little upset with us at halftime, and we came out and defense played great, held them to one touchdown in the second half, and offense just started clicking. That's how you guys were down 29 to 7 at the half. What was it like in the locker room? It wasn't a pretty sight. <laughs> no, uh, Coach Edwards doesn't get upset too often, but he had a right to this time. We weren't playing our normal game, and, and he fired us up, and we came out and played a good game. Well, congratulations. It was great to watch. We're going live back to Norman, Oklahoma. Back here in Norman, Oklahoma at Memorial Stadium, where you just saw Ricky Turner get it down for a couple of yards. Still a fourth down and a long three to go for Pittsburgh and a long day it's been for the Pitt Panthers. 52 to 10, under five minutes to go. Ty Detmer, just your average five touchdown day. Yeah, 448 yards pass, you know. <laughs> Two numbers. <laughs> Fourth down, Pittsburgh. First man through. Nice spin and a good first down run for Derek Lewis, the fullback. We talked about it earlier in the half of how Pittsburgh had not given up and see that same kind of effort coming from them. These are uh, some hungry young men want to try to make their mark certainly when you get that second group in there it's an opportunity for them to as we said before work up a little sweat Paul Hackett who's enjoyed one of the things he said he said it's not how much I know it's how much I can get my players to know under some very stressful conditions and boy this is stress today he's made some changes there too you know they he took the names of the uh, players off their uniforms and trying to give them the idea of being a team and so there's no personal pronouns <laughs> on this organization. With a two tight end set, Stark back to throw. Got it complete inside the 10. And that's Chris Boyer, the second catch of the day. Gonna bring up uh, first and goal as they move the chains. 4-10 left to go in the ball game. Mac Brown's North Carolina team with a big win in Georgia, ekes by Southern Mississippi. Bill Curry still looking for a win, huh? Kentucky. Indiana's still a strong ball club. There's, there's Keith Jackson down there. He worked his way back to the sideline. He said he wanted to go down for the party. <laughs> he liked the fact it was a little bit cooler up here, though. Boy, he looks in great shape. I don't know. He must be around 230 now, maybe 225. I mean, he is in excellent condition. I'm sure Buddy Ryan out at Philadelphia Eagles will be very pleased to hear that. Keith was out here at practice on Thursday, doing a little bit of uh, personal coaching with some of the young guys. 3.56 to go in the ball game. Oklahoma big over Pittsburgh. Freshman running back. As we're down under four minutes. That'd be, a, that'd be a pretty good seat, wouldn't it? Hey, that's almost as high as we are up here. <laughs> <laughs> you can definitely watch the plays develop in that, baby. <laughs> and we've got an injured Sooner down in the end zone. Coming up tonight on CBS. Don't forget the second of our doubleheader as we kick off our college football season and what a way to do it on huh? number one Notre Dame home to number four Michigan Gary Moeller making his debut as head man of the Panthers and Lou Holtz and his fighting Irish number one in the country going into that one that's tonight nine o'clock right here on CBS tell you what Tim Brandt and Jim Nance have to be two of the luckiest guys in America they're gonna have two of the best seats to a great football game you know it they're gonna have bringing a, you that game you can have a good seat right at home don't forget that's tonight at nine We still don't know who that is down on the field, but we know one thing. Oklahoma has been, uh, today has been extremely successful uh, offensively. They have put together uh, the kind of offensive day you dream about if you're their offensive coach. Kenyon Rashid, couple of touchdowns and 121 yards. Ike Lewis and Duell Brewer, who did most of that 106 on some long carries. A 51 and a 47-yard touchdown run, so he did the majority of it on two pops through the line. And there's Darnell Walker in the corner, who has had a fine game. A little bit shaken up, a little woozy, but he appears to be all right. Coming into the game, he had a slight groin pull, and they were concerned about that, but it didn't hurt him all day. You know, I was looking at those rushers. I'm wondering if those guys are going to start like a 100-yard club, you know. Every week, you got to make your contribution. <laughs> well, they've got, they've got some legendary names to follow, don't they? The, the Steve Owens and the Greg Pruitts and, and Billy, Billy Sims. Sims, and the list goes on and on. Second and goal, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. 
Derek Lewis can't find any room inside either. In fact, he may have lost a yard. It'll be third and goal. Brad, something else is interesting about being here at Oklahoma is uh, we talked about the family and their tradition. And so many of their former players come back and visit with them. Uh, and uh, that's all a part of that alumni association, the Letterman Alumni Association. But it really is kind of fascinating to see the great players that they've had here come back and spend some time with the young men that are here now. Earlier today, we saw the feature that had uh, Leroy Selman on it. Of course, Lucius Selman, uh, one of the Selman brothers, is defensive coach here. His brother Dewey, he said, would certainly be at the game today. So guys like that are always in the stands and the kids have to look up to them and say wow the Selman boys and Billy Sims or whoever back to watch us play and that's got to fire them up yeah I could have done without uh, Leroy Lucius's brother <laughs> we both came in in the rookie years of the same year in the NFL and one of my first games was playing against his brother Leroy and I went in there and I go oh you know <laughs> I'm gonna get cut right now <laughs> you're still waiting to see how he got by you that's so right I wanted to get a copy of that tape <laughs> So we got a fourth and goal for Pittsburgh at the seven yard line. Boyer and Dickerson are the wide outs to the top of your screen. Got to bang it in there on the ground and they don't get it. So the Oklahoma defense prevents Pittsburgh from another touchdown and they have had quite a day as well. We've heard it a lot today. Why not 52 to 10? Oklahoma. Just under two minutes to go. Oklahoma takes over. Just inside its own five yard line. Going a little bit too early. Taron Manning. You get Boy, when he gets it going at, at about, what, three and a quarter? <laughs> yeah, I want you to go down there and tell him he was early, all right? <laughs> he's, had a, he's had a great football game. Uh, uh, we saw him on some key blocks. Uh, the one block in particular that comes to mind was the uh, Rashid touchdown. He covers up a whole side of the field almost. You know, the interesting thing about him is he's awfully quick and he's got great feet. Uh, I was watching him at practice and you see he's a little upset. He threw his helmet down. You see everybody getting out of his way. I would too. <laughs> <laughs> There's a china shop over there somewhere for that bull. <laughs> and knocked back near the goal line. It's Corey Johnson. So Oklahoma now deep in their own territory. They're going to spot it right about the two yard line. Terry Ray, who's had a big day, Charles Franks, both from the secondary, They're trying to cool off a little bit. Well, they told us they wanted to re you know, establish themselves as a secondary. And they just tell the story over in that pit sideline. It's been a long day for them. 120 to go in the ball game. Blue team. Blue team. Dale Gundy still at the controls. Not going to be a first down, though, for Aaron Goins. Got it out across the 10, 12-yard line. Third down and a couple to go. The celebration is going to be on here in Norman. <laughs> it's going to be a fun night here. Well, 7-4 and four a year ago, and off to a 2-0 and oh start here in a moment. Somebody's going to grab that bucket. Somebody's going to get wet, I think. I think they're going to fight over who's going to be dumped on, though, as hot as it's been down there. <laughs> Now to the final plays. Third down at two here. I don't think that's going to be a first down. Paul Hackett has seen Oklahoma roll up 530 yards of total offense. 430 on the ground. That's the top rushing performance ever against a Pittsburgh team. And look out, Coach Gibbs. <laughs> <laughs> he got a double dip. He got the double or the triple. He might have gotten the triple. <laughs> he said, thank you very much. <laughs> That'll cool him off, but his team was hot today. Oklahoma rolls big at home. Final score, the Sooners over the Panthers of Pittsburgh. 
52 to 10 here in Norman. Norman, 52 to 10 over the Pitt Panthers and a happy bunch on their way to the locker room. And Dan, uh, Oklahoma got that interception from Chris, Chris Wilson, and they never looked back, did they? No, I think the bad news for anybody in the Big 8 and anybody looking to go up in the rankings is that Oklahoma football is back on schedule. That they are, the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Keith Hamilton from Pittsburgh and Jason Belser, who had an interception and a fumble recovery for Oklahoma. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. Again, the Sooners win it big. For Mike Joy and Dan Jiggetts, this is Brad Nessler saying so long for Memorial Stadium, where the final score, the Sooners 52, the Pitt Panthers 10. Don't forget, later tonight on CBS. Against Kentucky's